Now, I would love to enable hardcore mode because if you look here, uh, you'll see that when I click it, it's going to make a fun sound. And the music gets really fun. Unfortunately, uh, we'll have to auto rule it. <laughs> we, we're gonna auto rule. Yeah, the music in this game is fucking great. I don't want to waste too much more time. I want to start um, because again, day one can take upwards of like five hours or six to beat, depending on how much I do and what decisions I make. So uh, I don't want to waste too much time. So if you don't know what Disco Elysium is, Mother of God, Mother of God, what? Mother of God, uh, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, you'll figure it out. It's a story-based RPG that recently got a whole new update that adds full voice acting to the entire game. It's one of the best RPGs, or at least most unique RPGs of all time in that it's entirely dialogue-based. And I know that sounds boring, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> this game's got some of the best fucking writing in an RPG I've played in years. Uh, it's awesome. There's also some new quests that just got added based on political ideologies. <laughs> political vision quests. Um, I'm going to make my own character. We're not going to use presets. I'm going to create my own boy. So, let me explain how this game works before while I'm making the character, because it's actually, in every other fucking RPG, your character can be somewhat... You, the, I would say the choices you make in this, in the adjustabilities, are the most relevant for your entire playthrough than any other RPG ever. Uh, <laughs> the, this is going to impact your entire playthrough, what you pick in like this screen right here. Uh, because everything is based off of dice rolls. And the way the game works is that you will have, say, you'll have a dialogue choice, and the game will say like, okay, there's a 25% chance, unspoken, invisible chance, that one of your voices in your head will pop up and say something and start you on a course of doing something silly in this dialogue tree. But if you have a one in that skill, because you never put any points into it, okay, then you're never even going to see the result of that. Like you won't even know that there was a possibility to take a role there because you'll never be told about it. The game does a lot of silent rolling behind your back. The trivia dialogues are insane. Oh, oh, don't worry about that. We're not getting that. <laughs> Don't worry about encyclopedia. We're cutting that out of the game. Uh-uh. We're investing in the, uh, it, 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 we're gonna be investing in the shit that I've done less, okay? And that's, we're gonna be, we're going to be the most sensitive muscle man in the world. We're gonna be a, we're gonna be a, a good old himbo. You know what I mean? We're gonna be a himbo, dude. No lore run. You wanna, all right chat, all right fuckers. You wanna do a fucking lore run? Go ahead and buy the game, all right? And invest in encyclopedia. Go ahead, get 10 points in encyclopedia and then go fuck yourself, how about that? You wanna, you wanna go listen to lore for a while? This asshole up here will give you five fucking paragraphs about paint on a wall. And that's not even a joke, dude, he will. Because, chat, here's how this game's skills work. All right? Basically, the safe threshold for skills is two points. The more points you put into a skill does not mean the better you are at that skill. It means you'll get better rolls when you roll for it, but it also means that skill is going to be pushing every other skill out of the way to talk to you in your head. Meaning, say you take a lot of authority. Authority uh, symbolizes your ability to, like, yell at people. It's like your cop brain saying, I am the law. If you put one or two points in it, your character is going to know how to assert himself in public as a cop, all right? Now, if you take six in it, he's going to be screeching at people for jaywalking and, like, just trying to beat the shit out of everyone for not looking at him in the eyes when he yells at them. He's going to lose his fucking mind on the spot every single time, even the smallest slight comes his way. We are investing our, we are going to make it our signature. 
Uh, it will be now added a one more point raised uh, when we get around to playing that. It will now be a seven cap and we'll already have a point in it. Whatever our signature skill is, it gets like whatever our signature tree is, which is Psyche, uh, which is like charisma stuff. Uh, that gets everything raised to seven. Well, seven cap. And let me explain. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'm going to explain very quickly what all of them mean because they are relevant to the game. Logic is your ability to deduce like weird, like detective shit. Um, wield raw intellectual power, deduce the world. This is like detective shit. Our character's not going to need that. <laughs> We're going to feel it, dude. Encyclopedia is our ability to draw upon trivia, which one or two of is very helpful. Encyclopedia can be very helpful for telling you information that you can use in the game as context to talk to characters. But your character can also, like I said, look at a coin on the ground and say, ah, yes, this coin is from 1972. What an excellent year for coins. I remember when the first coin was made in the factory, the big factory halfway across the world. And then he'll go on a fucking tangent about something that has nothing to do with that coin at all in your head. They will do that for hours. It's funny, but holy hell. Rhetoric is your ability to persuade people uh, with brains. It's pretty fun. Rhetoric's a good one. Drama is your ability to lie and detect lies. Conceptualization is another encyclopedia tier bullshit one uh, where you can look at graffiti and say, what does it mean? Ah, uh, yes, the colors in this piece. And they'll go on for my, like hours again about it. But again, not when you only have one or two points. It's when you have six or seven points that your character starts to actually break down and points and your skill can actually end up hurting you in interactions. Like, when you have max authority, people will just be like, are you fucking crazy? Like, you'll be succeeding roles, and people will be like, your, your deputy, the person helping you in the story will be like, stop. You need to stop. You need to stop right now. And my guy's just screeching at someone while my, while my friend is, like, begging me to stop it. <clears throat> Visual calculus is our ability to use the law of physics uh, to work for the law. It lets us sort of, like, basically use math and shit to uh we take advantage of that kind of stuff we can like track the trajectory of a rock that was thrown at someone to find out exactly where the rock came from shit like that volition is our ability to keep ourselves together uh <laughs> this is an extremely relevant skill and we will have many roles in volition <laughs> volition is our ability to Roll with the punches as someone calls us a pathetic loser. And if we fail our volition rolls, we will take mental damage, which can eventually result in our character having a heart attack and permanently dying. So you want to be able to succeed volition rolls. Inland Empire is um, Wild Wasteland. It's, uh, it lets us talk to things that aren't even real. We'll see things in the world that no one else will see. We could see a cash register talk if we if it was high enough. If you put that thing high enough, you will go fucking completely insane. That's like the psychotic tree. Empathy is our ability to understand others and work with that. Authority, you can already guess because I've already explained it. Esprit de corpse is our connection to the police force. Understanding cop culture. Suggestion is our ability to charm people. Uh... It's got the same sort of applications that rhetoric has. Uh, it's just a different version of it, basically. Muscle boy. Take the blows. Don't let the world kill you. This decides how tough we are. Pain threshold, same sort of deal. Physical instrument. This, is, this describes how strong we are. Tough and strong are different things. Physical instrument is what's going to decide if we can like pick up a big brick and huck it. Uh, so it's important to have some electrochemistry is, uh, drugs. Your character can take drugs and be very into them. And the higher your electrochemistry is, the more the game is going to be like, hey, 
Yeah. Can we do drug? No, I don't really. I, I have six points in electrochem. I'm going to make you take them anyways. What? Yeah, I succeeded in a roll against the player. We're taking drugs today. And then we'll take drugs without the character's permission. I, we, we're doing drugs. <laughs> that will happen. Eventually your electrochemistry will succeed a role and your character will just be like, I know I shouldn't be drinking any more alcohol after what happened, but I'm going to drink some more. <laughs> I deserve it. That's kind of bad design. Uh-huh. Chat member? How about you don't talk about bad design till you've seen it applicable in the game? How about that? Shivers. Raise the hair on your neck. Tune into the city. This lets you basically sense danger before it happens. Uh, it'll let your character say, like, something's off. And then get the shit kicked out of him seconds later anyways. Uh, half light is our ability to threaten people and scare them. <laughs> That's our ability to grab someone by the neck and strangle them while yelling, tell me what I want to do! And then, you know, still get the shit kicked out of us because we're the sorriest cop ever and it never works twice. Motorix, honestly, I rarely go into Motorix. It, it has applications and important applications, but it's basically all of these are your ability to dexterously do things. It's dex build, right? Hand-eye coordination is your ability to aim your gun. Pfft. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Perception. Uh, lets you see things that you might have missed in the world. And trust me, if you have low perception, you are going to just miss entire parts of a crime scene. Because you won't be able to tell what the fuck is... You can squint and fail a perception roll and never get a piece of information and you have to play the whole game without ever knowing it, a crucial detail of the, of the story. You might just miss it. And you'll have to figure it out a different way. This game is be This game never softlocks you. You can beat the whole game and get to the ending without ever succeeding a roll. <laughs> you will just be the most pathetic loser that ever lived, and that's a price you gotta pay. Reaction speed uh, makes you faster, makes it easier to dodge stuff. Savoir faire, uh, sneaking, uh, sort of like uh, our ability to be acrobatic, interfacing, picking locks, fucking with like machinery, stuff like that, and composure. Uh, let's you be cool. <laughs> this one is pathetic, okay? Because this one, you'd think the composure would be like looking cool under real stress, but your character can just take a composure roll when someone's calling him a loser. And he can take mental damage if he fails the composure roll. He, they, someone could just be like, you are a fucking pathetic, sorry cop. And, my, and you'll have a forced composure roll. And when you fail, your guy will be like, you're right. And then he'll take damage. This is a sad build. All right, chat, here's the thing. I highly recommend you do not do what I do and not take points into intellect or motorics. I highly recommend you trust your fucking heart and just do whatever you want to do. I'm taking high psyche and high physique because psyche and physique directly impact how many health and mental points you have. So I'm going to start with six mental health and four physical health. These ones do impact choices, but these two are basically for hardcore survival purposes. <laughs> and they're also the homes of my favorite skills in the game. Authority is my favorite tree, which you guys will see in time. Shall we chat? We gotta get into it. This is gonna be a pretty hefty thing. Inland Empire all the way, bro. We'll do a little bit of inland, probably. We'll have to see how much has changed. It's been a while since I played, so I'm probably going to miss things every once in a while. It's time. Keep in mind, I will be using emote mode regularly. The Furies are at home in the mirror. It's up, never mind. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. 
You don't have to do anything anymore. Okay. Ever. Ever. Never. Ever. I'm going to simply keep on non-existing, I think. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. You... Wait, what was that about the ex something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead. What are they talking about? Soaking in some lurid ex. acidic sauce. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning. And it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. The meat thing. Uh, I want to no, I wanted to know about the X something. No, I'm going to plunge back into the fathomless deep. I'm not going anywhere near that X something in a million years. There. No ball of meat. No light in the formless nothing. Just night swimming. How about you cough up some more of that sweet oblivion, huh, ancient reptilian brain? Coming right up, sir. Smooth passing. Mm -mm -mm. That's some good fucking oblivion, my guy. Alonzi, let's go. All right. Nothing town to fuck over. A return trip to the silence, please. Do you want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? Don't stop. Keep singing. Sing me the sweet song of death. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Uh -huh. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. Oh, the disco. I have to wake up the disco. You can take it. You're a champion. Dude, Volition is here. They just, Volition just slammed the door down and succeeded a medium roll quietly in the background. They rolled a fucking 12 on a roll of 10. They just kicked in the door. They're here. Wait, so what's this? So if I wanted, I could say, I guess vote? Yeah, I could pick a vote like this. And you guys could pick what you wanted. We'll, we will use this. And good news is you all picked the correct roll. No, I'm not scared. I'm a champion. Volition's right. I am a champion. So what's this then? I'm guessing that's my skills. For skill altering. Maybe you guys can like buff me and stuff. We'll test that out once I'm out of here. This is sort of like a... This, this conversation's for me and Volition, man. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. No, I'm not scared. Chat, stop voting, it's over. Are you dumb? <laughs> are, you, are you stupid? You kind of dumb today. The stench of liquor <laughs> rises from your mouth. I know it. Hit. An ungodly headache. Oh! Oh! Bird! You gave us one int. Oh God, you're like the voices too that, oh no. Help! Someone cut my head off. It's trying to murder the rest of me. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. Open your eyes, man. Oh, 
Oh, chat. Also, you vote in the overlay, not in the chat. You don't even need to type in the chat. It's a it's a extension. If you can't see the extension, that's because you're on mobile. Or because you don't have it enabled. It uses the extension. Which can also be used to check my journal, I believe. So don't be stupid. Let's take a look around. Where am I? What is all this? This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. What am I? What is that thing? I just uh, keep looking around. Looks like someone tore out the tape while playing, while a song was playing. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. He's a clown. Let's just look around. Pants. Uh, pants for me. These give us what minus one savoir faire plus one electrochemistry taken. You hear a jingle. Oh, what is it? Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Oh, thank you, Perception. Fish them out. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. I see, I see. Well, I'm I'm wearing pants now, which is good, I guess. Let's also get our shirt on. There's our disco ass blazer. It's gonna give us plus one and esperate to corpse. Nice. Now, uh, let's get our tie. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Okay. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck <laughs> so that you may continue your adventures together the, in this strange world. A tie. What are my odds to succeed this 17? All right, chat. You vote using the extension, not in the chat. Don't be stupid. I know you're all gonna vote for the fucking Savoir Faire, and then you're going to see the results of your actions, which have consequences. Wait, I got an idea to force you guys to vote right. I'll just turn on emote only mode. <laughs> Wait, I got, I figured it out, chat. It's so easy. Well, it looks like Savoir Fair. 17% chance, huh, chat? Well, you're gonna see it. You reach out to grab the tie, but what's this? Diffuse radiant ah! chest pain. Ooh! Oh, comes over you. Something in my chest hurts! Grab your chest! This is ah! bad. Feels like sharp stones oh! on your chest and keeping you from moving. <laughs> ah! for quite a long time. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to start worrying. Finally, the pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move, hoping it will keep you from dying. I'm gonna pull on the fan. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. It's now a 58% chance to get the fucking tie. Because uh, we get a plus three on our roll because the fan turned off. That's how this game works. You get, you get advantages based on what you've done for the roll. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. The not contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Okay, I'm gonna also pull on the light bulb. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. Uh, you can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Uh, it's just a little hangover-induced photosensitivity. Don't overreact. Thanks, paint threshold. Bring it on! Little black spots dance on your retinas. It's almost pleasurable. I see, I see. Yeah, Chad, I'm not gonna have you guys vote unless it's like important decisions, just for the record. So don't be like, let us vote, dude. 
Like these are just dialogue choices. <laughs> I, I've seen some people like, dude, let us vote for everything. No. I'm going to put the tie on. Oh, it is on. Horrific necktie. The necktie is adorned with a garish pattern. It's disturbingly vivid. Somehow you feel as if it would be wrong to ever take it off. It's your friend now. You will betray it if you change it to, for some boring scarf. Plus one inland empire. Friend. It's my friend, the necktie. Well. Let's keep on looking around the apartment for now. You got a tub over here. And what looks to be an undershirt. You see bottles in the bathtub, wine, beer, and sweet liquors. And a shirt. I'm gonna take it and put it on. All right, we are officially now clothed. And boy, oh boy, are we a look. <laughs> but how much of a look? A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Huh? R really Nothing? Really. All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. We've lost our entire memory! <clears throat> Chad, we don't even remember what we look like! That's how bad it is. Wipe the mirror off. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there. And you will never unbecome it. Inland Empire, I respect you. I thank you for trying to interfere with my work. But I'm gonna have to tell you to go fuck yourself. Actually, maybe, maybe, you're, maybe I should touch it first. Make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah. There is definitely something wrong with it. Huh? What do you mean? This? What? What's wrong? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. I'm, I'm sorry. Touch his nose. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Uh, at least my tongue is okay. It's not. It's swollen oh. and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. I'm scared. I want to stop doing this. No, chat. No. We have to wipe the mirror now before we fucking chicken out and never do it at all. Behold. Oh! Oh! Oh, Jesus Christ! He's looking good! Dude! Looking good down there, man. What the fuck? Not bad. Not bad at all. Classically cute. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Dear Lord, what is this thing? Of course I do. It's, uh... Some kind of superstar. I think I'm a superstar. This is the face of a late stage alcoholic. I think it's the face of a superstar. It appears you're also dead. Oh. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Uh, I don't know, I'm not making it. The face is making it itself. I think, it might be because I'm a superstar. Yeah, I'm gonna keep thinking I'm a superstar, I think. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, no, this is the face superstars make. You couldn't stop if you wanted to. It's neurological. Uh, no, no, I'm not gonna bother anyways. This is what superstars do. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. Yep, I'm keeping the face. I mean, I'm keeping the face. The face is incredible. If you guys want to see what the face doesn't look like without the smi smile, look it up, and you'll understand why I'm keeping the face. 
You don't want to stop making the face. All right? You don't want that. You want to keep making the face now. All right? What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? <laughs> Superstardom. <laughs> it means superstardom. All right, narrator. How many times I gotta tell you this? This is what I am. I've decided I'm a rock star. God, I don't know. It's indescribable. I think it, it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm, af I'm afraid it's meant for, for the ladies. It's insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm pulling it. I think I'm sort of pulling it off, too, in a sad has-been kind of way. There's some charm to it. <laughs> I think it's something to do with a sorry cop or something. Nah, it's super starting. You should check yourself for a pulse, superstar. From here, it looks like a cadaverous spasm. Uh, I don't need to. I almost died trying to get that tie. But I heard my heartbeat. Getting clever appears to make the expression even worse. Now it's mixed with smugness. Oh no. <laughs> the expression's getting even worse. Oh god, he's smug cop now. So we got two rolls here. Um, we have a 13 encyclopedia. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. 3% chance. Or a 3% chance with electrochemistry attempt to stop the expression from happening. Since these are white checks, if I fail them, I can retry them. I will let you guys vote once for it. And in order to guarantee that you guys can't vote without permission, here's emote only mode. Use the extension. As you're supposed to. Now, if we do succeed, keep in mind, chat. We must continue without the expression. The odds are so low. All right. Looks like you guys want me to attempt to find the source of it. I'm not sure you're going to like the answer we receive. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place <sighs> somewhere in the past. Uh. That's all you know for now. Okay, chat, so basically now we cannot re-roll this unless I level up my encyclopedia one point. Same could be said for the electrochemistry one. However, I'm not even gonna bother. This is the face I have. This is my life. My life is the expression, okay? Door's locked. All right, well, I'm not about to turn off that. Let's go. You can actually move this character with W, Y, S, and D, by the way. We need shoes. The hell? That's it. The window's broken. Well, we don't have shoes. Guess I better go look for them. It looks like I might have... I don't know. I broke the window. Time to go. Okay, I was... Guys. When I didn't hear music for a second, my heart broke. I like started to panic that they that that was a copyrighted trek. We're good. <laughs> Got money on the counter. There's something here. Forty cents. Wherever we don't have money, this is all the money we get. Is change we pick up off the street. So let's do some exploring. The music that is in this game is fucking awesome. What's the setting? Made up. Sort of steam future punk-esque. Also, I see this game's load times have never shortened uh, as time has gone on. Matter of fact, they seem to be longer than a uh, base game. <laughs> My shoe! A gust of briny wind washes over you. Green shoe, right foot. Nice. Now I'm only missing one shoe. The smell of the sea makes you dizzy.
load times are longer and sometimes cra the game crashes for me. There's not many situations where you have to load in this game, which is good. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty hefty. Anyways, uh, I guess this entire game we will be missing one of our shoes. That's... That's fine. Uh, this green crocodile leather shoe is exclusively for the right foot. Yours. Pick out the shards of glass and it fits you perfectly. There's the other one. Man, chat, hey. Hey, chat. I've put 40 to 50 hours in this game. I don't need you guys telling me where stuff is. Alright, just, just for the record. Uh, shut the fuck up or I'll have emo only mode on the entire time. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. Thank you, Composure. How do they fit? How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Oh, good. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. Good, good, good. The only good thing about me. What day is it today? Hello, officer. Calendar says it's March. The year is 51. Ma'am? The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Officer? Am I military personnel? Uh, no. Huh? There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. I see, I see. Wait, I know. I'm a businessman. Chief executive officer, right? The young woman shakes her head slowly. Okay. Chief technical officer. No, you're a police officer, sir. Goddamn right I'm a police officer. Don't you forget okay, it. Okay, cool. I won't. All right. She means it. She wouldn't defy authority. However sweaty and bloated it may look. Good. No need to be alarmed. I was just getting into character, you know? No, no, no. Good. Now, did you know... How did you... How did you know I was a police officer? First, I have to ask. Are you okay, sir? You look like you're about to throw up. Can I bring you something? She's right. Something wants to come out through your mouth. But you can keep it down because your body does not control you. Uh, I'm fine. Answer the question. No, it's a small wonder I'm able to even formulate this very thought. But I'll be fine. How did you know I was a cop? Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, as you put it. Three days, and I don't remember a thing. Let's play it cool. What kind of business? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. I don't really remember being a cop or anything else for that matter. Why would anyone let me be an officer of the law? Try the expression on her. Let her know you want her physically. All right, or I should get going now. I feel like I don't even need to uh, vote to know what you guys would pick. Uh, I don't need to check that. Um. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Look, chat. Okay. This. <laughs> I'm hoping we fail it because the fail of this is pretty funny. <laughs> if we fail it, the result is extremely good. But if we, I don't think I've ever succeeded it, to be fair. I'm hoping I'll fail. Red check must be made. Yeah, I feel like anytime it's red. Oh, nice. Uh, guys, I actually, it seems that gaining, saying goddamn right I'm a policeman has resulted in even more respect. And therefore, my chances of succeeding in the suggestion role are even higher. It's time to t use my expressional powers to say I want her physically. Here we go. Try the expression. Come on, why are you still doing this? I'm at death's door. Bloated, a goner. And still, does the longing ever stop? Alcohol raises testosterone levels. Especially in men. Oh. 
The levels remain elevated after inebriation ends and the pain begins. I see. You see comfort. It's only natural. Oh, that makes sense. She puts out her cigarette. Goodbye. Have a good day. Chat. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Huh? And now, it never stops. Oh, bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Chat. Uh, this is the only time I'm going to tell you what happens if you fail a roll. But if you fail that roll, instead of saying that sort of smooth line, that's still pretty bad. He instead says, I want to do the sex to you. Uh, with a straight face. He says, I want to do the sex to you. And then she starts laughing at you and you take a gigantic morality uh, penalty and you ha you basically die on the spot. <laughs> she tells you to say it again, at which point you are forced to say it again and take yet more damage. <laughs> the expression, you know, though, the expression works every time. You know, looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray. It's still smoking. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. The what now? The living shit. Your mesolimbic reward pathway does not mince words. It wants smokes. Electrochemistry, stop it. I'm not, I don't, am I, a, am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? A monster, a murderer, the gnome of Jeroma. You feel like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, Seductive cigarette stub, still smoldering deliciously. But she broke it at the filter. I can't smoke it. It's broken. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike. Oh! A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied. Then smoke them all. Oh my god. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Huh? Suddenly, the garish tie feels very <laughs> snug. <Through> the neck tie! <laughs> or you could not do that. No one is making you. I... I should enthusiastically do that. I should smoke. No, no, no. I should not not do that. No, no. I'll make it pr- I'm, uh... I'm going to not not do that. Smoking is bad. And volition is cool. Wait, no, that I I, I I should not do that. Yes, I should do that. I should enthusiastically do that. I should not not do that. Wait, these are all the same thing. I need to say, well, I'll think about it. All these are going to make me a smoker. Aside from, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Oh. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all oh, the time. God. It doesn't count if it's not all the time. All the time. And when you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. Whatever you say, electrochemistry, whatever you say, man, I love you. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. Massive game bonuses. If you guys aren't starting to realize how this game works, I hope that interacting with an ashtray was a pretty good example of how this game's character traits work. Um, let's keep looking around. This is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper Trump Le Monde. Let's go downstairs. And start jamming, baby. Well, here we are. The lobby. This is where the lyrics would be. Oh, it's a karaoke stand. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into it. So, what is this? What is this? A mirror? What is this? The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul is immense. My soul is modest. It's normal sized. My soul is puny. My soul's cubic content 
is obscured by the hangover. Of course. At this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. You're Through right. a PA system. You're right. You're right. By other people. You're right. You're right. Whether they like it or not. You're right, half right up their ears, says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. Half Light's right. <laughs> Whether they want it or not, I'm gonna sing today. One way or another, they're gonna get it, and they're gonna like it. This goes well with a theory I'm developing that I'm a down on my luck superstar person, Half Light. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Correct. Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. What should I sing when it comes to it? You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. Lamentation sounds good. They'll really get a gauge on my soul with that. Yeah, yeah. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? True, correct. No you have to find something tragic to sing first, though. Oh my god, we gotta find something tragic to sing, chat. Alright, finish the thought. Should I strike a pose? This feels right. You belong here. I belong on the stage. You're right, chat. You're right. This is what I would- this is my calling. Hey, man! Did you karaoke? A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter. Inspecting I'm a rock star. A Nothing's gonna change my mind. As you approach, he gives you a side. I've been a rock star, a superstar. Down again. This whole time. All right, chat. I'm not a cop. I'm a superstar. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now, he is purposely ignoring you. Looks like he's not a fan. I'm starting to sense you're not a fan of mine. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. So, not only am I a cop, but I'm also a hero? Yes you are, a real decorated hero. What, what did I do? I got a big smile on my face. I'm the expression is getting wider. What did you not do? First you took the body down, then you solved the murder, then you didn't trash my hostel room. Maybe you even negotiated the strike. Oh my god, I did all those things? <laughs> I'm guessing I didn't do any of those things. I don't appreciate your tone, boy. That's no way to speak to an officer of the law. No, I did all those things. No, you see, actually, you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. What have I been doing then? How, have you seen me around? No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. He looks down again and keeps plucking at the bird. I look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. I see. Something about it makes you feel bitter. What? What happened to the bird? Look, your buddy is over there. Buddy? He looks at the doors. There's a man in a bomber jacket that's tapping his foot on the door, on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? Uh, listen here. Listen here, you little shit. All right, I lean in. I'm a cop, and I talk to whomever I please. He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. He ignored me. My authority, if my authority was higher right now, I would have grabbed him by the fucking shirt and hauled him over the desk to look at me in the eyes. But my authority is not yet pumped. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. You look like a bartender. That period of my life is over. Not everyone who stands behind a counter is a bartender, okay? I'm the cafeteria manager. What, what's the difference, though? I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. 
Where did this Sylvie go? She just, you know. There's something there, and it's not good. That's all you know for now. Y she just, you know? You know what? All right, let's leave. Chat, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and then we're gonna go talk to the guy. All right, we're gonna go talk to the guy. I'll be right back, then we talk to the guy. Hey, I'm back. Hey, I'm back. Let's keep looking around. The menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it now. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. Over here we have... Man, this place is quiet. The door is bolted. A sign reads, Kitchen reserved for personnel until 1300. Okay. What we got over here then? What's on the sign? The sign reads, Mess Hall reserved for union members. Doors open 1600. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. This royal pinball machine is unplugged. Let's see. Hey, are we friends? A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. Hey. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Best character in the game and coming. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Hold on. Who is he to me? He. Is your half brother? Oh my God! Thanks, Esprit the corpse, for that excellent role. I shake his goddamn hand. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct Fifty Seven. You must be from the Forty First. Oh, uh, yeah. You realize he's waiting for your name. Oh my God! Uh oh. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get. Creative. Conceptualize. I feel like I don't need to tell you guys. I feel like I don't need to have a vote to know that we're all going for conceptualization. But I'm going to see what this button does. It seems like you guys can vote to boost one of my skills. And I'd recommend if you could vote right now, you would vote to boost conceptualization. But I'm not sure if that's how this works. I have no idea what that button does. I actually have no idea what that button does. <laughs> Oh, you did! You boosted it to 42%! You boosted the attribute. Good shit. We have a 42% chance to give this guy... We can, we can boost one and lower one. What did you lower? <laughs> it's a vote on your four major attributes. Chat, it's... Chat! It is an overlay! Stop being stupid! That's all. You're embarrassing yourself. Every single time I see someone post a number instead, when I look back, when you've done something real dumb and I look through your chat logs and I see you were so stupid you didn't know what an overlay was, I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> I'm gonna remember this guy fucking posted two while I was playing Disco Elysium. All right, chat. We, oh, went back down. We missed our chats. I have to wait another fucking two minutes to get it back! I didn't know it was fine. I thought it would give me time to... Well... It's the mobile users? Yeah, but I've said like eight times that it's an extension. You don't have to post numbers. Just remember that. It's, it appears on the screen if you're not mobile. Well, Chad, looks like we're gonna have to roll with the 28%. Let's try not to embarrass ourselves. Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. 
Uh oh. It's so fucking cool. Oh, it's very cool. But when I come off like a douche, if I name myself that, it, it's very, very cool. But maybe just a bit too ostentatious. It's so cool. You instinctively run your hand over your multi-patterned orange tie. Huh? The sensation of wrinkled silk somehow makes the name sound even cooler. Oh my god. At Tomato, I'm actually mobile and I can see the extension. So these other guys are just smooth brain. Oh my God. Could you imagine me giving a bunch of mobile users the benefit of the doubt and then some actual mobile user comes out and actually says that the extension works for them too? Therefore guaranteeing that that's not true, is it? It's not a big deal regardless. It's just like, you know, I'll just pop it into emote mode when I do votes. Cause I don't want people to, the main issue isn't that people are posting numbers. It's that they're not actually voting and then they're just wasting their time, you know? I'd rather turn off chat while that's happening so that everyone will actually go to the right place with a higher chance so they're not like thinking they're doing something and then they're not doing it, you know? Because then you're sort of missing out anyways. The tie is, the tie is making me believe it's even cooler. More classy. Oh my Raphael God. Ambrosius Gusteau is one classy name and you're one classy cop. The tie just said that to me. Hang on. The tie might be onto something. I... My name is Raphael Ambrosius Costo. Yes, well. He doesn't even process what you just said. He moves on. It looks like we had a little skidding error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? You mean him? I nod over at the cafeteria manager. Yeah, just talk to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? We must be getting prepared for my big show, because I am a superstar, chat. We must be, the, the, the big concert for myself must be out back. It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Uh, yes, <laughs> the police. I'm aware I'm a policeman. Right. And the interviews? Uh... What interviews? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest, and then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. I... have done interviews, yes. Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. All right, all right. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Huh? Uh, uh, mm, d I don't like... <laughs> look, man, you know, yeah, look, he doesn't even, like, get us, man. Yeah. Does that mean the body is no longer in the tree? I, I don't really like dead bodies, you know? Sure. But did you take it down from the tree? Dead body? Mm-hmm. No. So, the body is still in the tree. How do you keep talking about this dead body? I don't even know- This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. All right, all right. Uh, okay. That's, uh... Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. Uh, we should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Uh, what if I, uh... Now, what if I told you I'm not really a police officer, son? We all feel that way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. That body's been cooking out there in the sun for a week now, huh? Then, chat, that's not ideal. But first, we have to take it down. Uh, how can you be so sure I'm from the police? I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. I suppose you could be impersonating him. 
you could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Uh, Inspectorate General? Internal Affairs. And I'm not them. I'm from Criminal Investigation. You said insignia. These white rectangles, you mean? Yes. But they're just white rectangles. They're not just white rectangles. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Revachol West. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage. But again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. But shouldn't I have a badge or something? Check pockets. You mean you don't have a badge? <laughs> oh, I, I, I mean, I... <laughs> would you look at that? I just... I have my badge. I'm a policeman. I just found it. Oh. If you didn't have your badge, then that would be very bad. You would need to report it on my shortwave. But since you do have it, we can go straight to the task at hand. All right, all right, sounds good. Sweats? A lot? All right, <laughs> looks like I have my badge. But I can't remember anything. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. <laughs> but I have seen officers go through worse, much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Right, 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 right. A painkiller would be good about now. This thing is pulsating with discomfort. Thank you, pain threshold. The best cure for a headache is, of course, morphine. They won't have that. So cigarettes would have to do. All right, electrochemistry. I don't like it when they show up, dude. What? Okay, let's roll. After you, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Welcome to the party, Kim. First, I'd like to talk to the uh, bartender again with Kim around. Just cover my bases, you know. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Just so I don't get like in like yelled at. Mr. Garth, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Precinct 41. He looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. Uh, you know, I'm the harbinger of ruin. As I said, Rafa Detective Raphael Ambrosius Custeau to you. I'm currently in between names. <laughs> They're all very good. I leave this one in your capable hands. Oh, it's closer than I thought it would be. I would doubling down on Raphael, then it looks like. Sounds good to me. As I said, Detective Raphael Ambrosius Custo. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. Sylvie? Me. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. And where is Sylvie? Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. Nice. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. He manages to read, it's not that many. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need direction. He doesn't manage that many. He's not that big of a deal. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. Huh? huh? Who, me? Yes, Detective <laughs> Crystal. Locked in! That's everything. our name for the whole game now. I have everything. You? Oh, you mean... Do I have questions? Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? The cafeteria manager is clearly agitated again. Uh, where is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. 
And how do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? Yeah. First you exit through that. Okay. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. Okay. A really big one. All right. You can get to the courtyard through there. All right. No need for the keys. Okay. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. I'm detecting a little bit of sarcasm in your voice, son. Are you... Is this... Is this insubordination? Does he want you to feel guilty of making that hole? It's implied in his voice. <laughs> All right, who killed him? I don't know who killed him. <laughs> I'm not the police. That's your job. All right, you seem awfully suspicious, son. Did you kill him? <laughs> you tell me right now if you killed him. What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him. Suddenly he turns up. Blood is being pushed. <laughs> you should hound him on this. Hound him <laughs> on this, the prey drive says. Did you kill him, Gart? No, I didn't. You can tell me, Gart. You killed him, right? I didn't. I don't appreciate this. What is this? Why did you have to kill him, Gart? Do I have to answer him? Is this mandatory? The lieutenant stands motionless. His expression unreadable. <laughs> did he hurt you, Gart? Is that why? Did you get some kind of sick kick out of killing him, Gart? What are you, an idiot? I told you I haven't killed anyone. Anyone? Have you killed someone else then, Gart? He ignores you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chad, this game's fucking great. Oh, I fucking, I fucking love it when your character just goes off the deep end and just starts screaming at someone. <laughs> all right, well, all right. Let's get, let's get off that. This is wasting my time. I'm a busy man. Uh, why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. All right. Uh, this is the second time you avoided that subject, son. Oh my God! What is your obsession with this Sylvie person? Get over it. Maybe it's he who's obsessed with this Sylvie person. Certainly sounds like it. All right, all right. Well, that's all for now. It's gone. You gained 30 XP by interviewing him. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. Huh? Ah. Uh, Looks at wallet, sees 40 cents. Gulp. <laughs> no one is saying the multi-pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely imagination. But... Let's bail! Time to push the eject button! Sounds like a responsibility. You don't like those. No, don't listen to him. It's I'm madness. A... Just talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slip away unnoticed. Here I go. I'm getting the fuck out of here. See you later, asshole. Uh... One moment you're running like the wind. Then you've suddenly turned around and are giving him the finger. Furiously, <laughs> with both hands. Why? The lady in the wheelchair is right behind me, isn't she? Why did I do this? Why did I have to use both my hands to flip him off? Why both? Watch out! <laughs> Why? Uh. We're dead. Everything goes dark. Back so soon. Hey, ancient reptilian brain. I had an accident. It was no accident. Those were disco moves from your spinal cord. The spinal cord has yet to reveal itself to you. Its mysteries are unholy mystery. Wow. There's more of you? Hidden? I'm so cool. Uh, I don't know, man. That just comes off as a lazy effort at reconceptualizing the antics of a shambling drunk. If it comes off like that, it's because it is. And you are. I was wrong to let you go. I should have kept you here. Is it bright where you are? Is it terrifying? Have you felt 
the love. Oh, well, I sure as hell haven't felt no love. That is too bad. We all need a little love. Huh? Oh, Are I you said okay? that out loud. No. You Ow. have sustained a trauma ah. in your neck. In addition, you have strained your left trapezius muscle. Pain surges down your back when you move. I'm not very okay. No, are you okay? The chair took the brunt of it. Don't worry. Are you sure, ma'am? Yes, yes. Check on him. Sir, I didn't I didn't mean for this to happen. I'm sorry. You this fucking should be. Place. <laughs> this is all your fault, Gart. First you fucking murder that guy in the backyard, and then you try to murder me. I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna sue you bad. Yeah, I'm gonna take you down. I'm a superstar. You can't do this to me. The drinks are on the house, okay? There were a lot of drinks on the tab. Ooh. I still have to charge you for three nights and the broken window, though. Uh, that's a hundred square. Cool. <laughs> thank you for your cooperation. Don't thank me yet. You still owe me a hundred real. If you don't have it by tonight, I just can't let you up there. Guys, we're about to be a hobo cop. Here it comes, guys. We don't need that room, and we're definitely not going to pay for it. We're going to be a hobo cop. And we're going to be a hobo superstar sorry cop. It's going to be so easy. That's our gameplay. And for God's sake, watch out for yourself. Thanks, Gart. I love you. Well then. By the way. Where is Oh no. The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't. It's it. him. It's Encyclopedia. Oh my god. It's he's shown himself. I made sure to give him only one point, so he should be stupid. Do I have a home? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. I don't know. Near? South, maybe? You don't really know, do you? I don't. Does this mean I'm homeless? South, maybe. Doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. I'll live in a dumpster. I don't care. Fuck everything, hobo cop. Entertain the thought when you get the time. Maybe being a hobo and a cop has its advantages? Yeah. I think it does. It's got so many advantages, I'm willing to lock it in as a mental thought. Hobo cop. Temporary research bonus, minus one composure, ungainly rambling. Yep, uh, basically chat how this game works is that in order to lock in a talent, you must first incur a minus one in a stat. So in order to start becoming a hobo cop, I must take a minus one composure debuff. And uh, this game's time progresses by dialogue. So as we talk to people, time progresses during the day. So you can't talk to everyone all the time. Eventually, you will run out of time during a day and you'll have to move on. You can't do everything. The problem. A cop and a hobo. A hobo cop. Upside. Can be disheveled. Doesn't have to wash. Carries himself with a lurched gusto. Hobo cop doesn't need anyone or anything. No one can kick you out because you don't have a home. Never pay rent again. Never again here. You're drunk. Why did you even come here, Harry? Go home. You're embarrassing yourself. Downsides. Are there any? I mean, seriously, give me one. I'm going to internalize Hobo Cup. We don't yet know the solution, but it's in my brain. There's an awful lot of talents in this game chat. And we won't discover them until dialogue options have unlocked them for us. We could invest in homosexual underground, but we will have to first find them. Maybe our cop is homosexual. That's for him to decide for himself over the course of the game. Well, I guess I'll talk to the grandma. Sort of feel bad. Hello, sweetie. The elderly woman turns to you with a smile. Does that mean you like me? <laughs> Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. Maybe I am. Maybe I am a sweetie. And have you found anyone to be sweet to? I had once winked twice, but then I lost her. No, I'm done with 
mating rituals this time around. I don't know, wink. Maybe I have. You wink. Rascal. I'm too old for you, and too married besides. Oh. Your advances haven't thrown her off one bit. In wink. another place and time, she would have probably welcomed your attention. Six in charisma? Yeah. Well, hey. You know, this cop. He's got the expression, and I think that's causing actual debuffs. I can't prove that it doesn't. The expression is a debuff on your gameplay power. <laughs> you must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Oh my god. Hire her on the spot. Oh my god, here we go. Chat. Sweetie needs money. Do sweeties get money? Alright, Granny, it's time to pay up. <laughs> Sweetie needs money. I need money to live. I'm a hobo cop, you see. I'm, I'm an enterprising hobo cop. How'd you like to roll with me, Granny? Whatever do you mean? I want you to be my wheelchair partner in fighting crime, ridding backyards of corpses, catching sequence killers. Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. Oh, Kim, I forgot you were there, of course. I forgot I had you. Yes, and it seems to me that you do well to stick close to him. He has the look of an upstanding officer of the law. Someone you can lean on. And, sweetie, you are looking unsteady. And even if he weren't there, I don't think you'd have much use for me. Why? Three heads are better than two. Thank you, but... Martinez isn't the most wheelchair-accessible place, you see. I'd slow you down. Perhaps another time. You seem to be in a chair. Oh my god, that is, that might be the fucking worst timed response ever. I think I now, uh, I think I now shake her down for capital. No, no, no. We're gonna hold off on shaking old ladies down for capital just yet. That, even, even though it's an RPG, I genuinely can't morally ask that even as a player in the video game. I can't do it. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed, like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Her eyes follow your movements with some concern. She won't judge you, no matter what you say. All right, here's the deal. I drank so hard I forgot literally everything. Oh my. You know where we are, right? A war zone. At the edge of the world. We're dead. Haunting each other. We're ghosts. Now, now. She tilts her head up. She tilts her head as she looks up at you with maternal solicitude. We are solicitude. alive. In a hostel called the Whirling in Rags. And the Whirling itself is in the city of Revishol. Honestly, I don't know diddly squat about Revishol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Revishol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. It looks like a shithole from uh, this angle, frankly. Looks like a bit of a shithole, but whatever. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revishol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. We're going to smash cut to the backyard with the body in a minute. And we're going to have a conversation with a character that will lead you to believe this is not the best city in the world. I'm just giving you that now, okay? Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? Uh, listen, lady. It's a bad year in my late 40s or 50s. I don't even know how old I am. All I know is we are approaching the end times. Perhaps, dear. Perhaps. But for now, it's just the spring of 51. 
Oh, all right. She is perturbed by your not knowing what year it is, but not by your mention of the apocalypse. It must be the end times. What? Inland Empire, are you fucking serious right now? <laughs> if Inland Empire is saying it. The lieutenant studies you, rubbing his chin. I'm beginning to suspect that you might indeed be completely adrift in this reality, thinks the lieutenant. How can it be that bad? Never mind. We're in this now. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. <laughs> What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Some kind of democracy? I'd like to think it's the dictatorship of the proletariat, but something tells me it's not. <laughs> Our leaders are fierce warriors who traverse the plains on steeds. Civilization cowers before us. We are governed by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the freest market. The freest market. Everyone hustles and grinds like a badass visionary. Radios are being used to control people's minds and to sport our perception of reality. Concealing our true masters. Foreigners and women. Oh. Cop, we are living under the cop regime. Cop world, brother, cop world. Actually, we are not. You could say that about almost any other nation, but not Revishal. Try one more time, officer. What mode of government? Damn it. I was really hoping it would be a cop world. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Um, every hustle, hustle cup. Oh no, nothing like that, dear. Revishal is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. Damn it! It's not almost no government of our It's own. not cop world, and it's not hustle world. Machines. Fucking hell! What kind of shit hole did I wake up in? I don't even know what to say. I'm so disappointed. It is quite disappointing, <laughs> yes. A lot of people would like some form of representation. There's talk, but for now, the RCM is all we've got. If there's no government, how come there's cops? Oh dear, this is troubling. You really ought to know that, being one yourself. There aren't any cops in Revishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. My brain we hurts. Have need a break. It hurts. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. So, how did I do? You didn't do too well, dear. Oh. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality in a word, it's very odd. Yeah, yeah. A sigh, the lieutenant buries his nose in his nose. You guys remember that body? <laughs> but maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And True. While I'm no doctor. Maybe she's right. Such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. Maybe she's right. Maybe what this world needs is an amnesiac superstar cop. That's dabbling in hoboism. Maybe. She means this sincerely. Worrying won't do you any good. Who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. Oh no. No. <laughs> I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Are you okay? I'm very sorry I crashed into you earlier. I don't know what got oh, into me. Oh, I'm perfectly all right. I'm more worried about you. What was that? Yeah, what was that? <laughs> yeah, you tell me, lady. That cafeteria manager is a bad man. A man without honor or compassion. 
It was like my body had a will of its own. I was running. My torso turned. My hands made this lewd gesture. I'm sorry you had to witness it. Don't beat yourself up sorry, over it too much, dear. People do strange things when the old fight or flight kicks in. I'm just glad you weren't injured. Sorry, cup. Guys, we're I'm morally obligated in this game to apologize whenever the game gives us an apology. Uh, I'm just telling you that now. That's a decision I've made personally. And every time I've ever played this game, we have to apologize for everything. Every time the game gives us, gives us an option to say sorry, we sorry, cup. It's required. Okay. Sweetie needs money. <laughs> now, Granny, Sweetie needs money. I gotta go. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. Bye. All right, Chet. It's time to get outside and get to work. The world needs us. But first, I'm going to save my fucking game. <laughs> There's a lot of saves from back in the day. Boatin' Boys. I don't remember what I did when it was Boatin' Boys, but I think I was very afraid of Boatin' Boys being the end of my career. <laughs> Anyways, let's get moving. Spoilers? Uh, well, no. <laughs> there are just boats in the game. This time for real? All around you, huh? rain falls on the great city. Did you beat it? I've beaten this game like four times. Dude. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters. Oh my god. Oh no! It's him! Guys, it's him! Emo only Andy! It's really him down there! Uh oh! <laughs> the spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky. Cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships. Clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. How does it feel? Your shirt sticks to your chest. The shoulders of your disco blazer grow heavy. The cold finds its way in under your skin. You shiver, and the city shivers with you. Motherfucker! <laughs> What's in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Will I? No, you are just one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. What's down the shore? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half finished construction, a defunct research and development building once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. Run your fingers through your dampened hair. What's in the east? The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Clench your teeth to stop the shuddering. Behind the gates, heaps of supply crates Red and blue metal shipping containers, slick with rain. The Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor is an artificial mountain range. Immense wealth resides within, and immeasurable poverty in its shadow. And beyond that? La Drissienne, King Dries Passenger Harbor. Cruise ships flanked by dock arms, cranes watching over the mouth of the river distributary. God, the writing in this game is so fucking good. And also, Chad, I'm going through all this because I've never actually gotten this before. Believe it or not, I've never had this happen when I left the building. So this is new to me too. This might be part of the final cut or it might've been something I just never got rolled. Because I just guess never had good shivers. What is it across the distributary? Kudon, the lower middle class, 
Distributary after distributary cuts the city blocks in half. Seven-story buildings trail off into the rain. What is behind? What is beyond the Quran? A silvery curtain of rain over the houses. The class divide. What's in the north? Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. And closer to here? A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath a dead man's feet. He swings from a tree. There he is. Bloated. Droplets of rain slip. And there he is. Cheeks. What's in the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. Man, the writing, in, the voice acting really brings this together in a way that just reading it never could to me. Revachol is the capital this of the This is a really world. good voice actor Jamrock for the narration. The like, a, like perfect Revachol. pick for this. Droplets like, this guy is nailing. Eyelashes. It's home. Why am I? Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Yeah! I have a brother in the cut. Where the hood at? Who said that? I'm not me. Why am I not there? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal, in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day the revolution fell. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. Shudder, look further. In the rain-swept distance, above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Satellite That's my officer, precinct. Jean Vichmer rushes down the precinct stairs, umbrella in hand. It's unopened. He doesn't seem pleased about the spring rain. My character is from Precinct 41. That's what uh, Kim already told us. So we're, our brain is currently remembering that we are from Jamrock, Precinct 41. We've been sent to this place. On the bridge, Officers Torson and McLean are standing guard. Torson wears jeans and a fishnet wife beater. Satellite Officer Vic Mayer passes by, and the young man remarks to him, Where's your homo, homie? What? It's not like that. They're what is called heterosexual life partners. They have a battle-tested relationship. A, a brother bond, if you will. Huh? Yeah. He opens his umbrella, but the wind immediately turns inside out. Hetero, sexual, life, partners. Fun, Yepery. Male-centric workplace humor. Have you seen him? Is there something wrong? No, nothing. It's just... Judit went to his place and found the Monday mail and opened. I think he's still there. You didn't, like, drink with him over the weekend, did you? That would be irresponsible. With that animal? Never again, man. What, is he still down there? In, you know, south of the interchange? The... what was it? In Martinez. He's in Martinez. They're talking about me. <laughs> They're talking about me. Your vision blurs. Ah! You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up. And I'm the animal. I'm the animal. What's above? Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. Holy shit, we can spider sense millions of miles. Our character is extremely powerful. If he succeeds every role in the whole game, he's an actual demigod. But, like, that's gonna happen. Motherfucker. This rain will not let up anytime soon. 
You should get a raincoat. There's a freight to the east. They sell them there. All right, all right. Well, let's take a walk around the area, see we can see, while avoiding the body, as long as we can. Any items I should see here? Do we have any perks yet? We do have a level up. Oh, no, we don't. Damn it. I mean, I'm putting them all into authority. Give me a fucking break. Nice car, man. Nice car. What is this, anyways? What kind of model is this? Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery. Bearing the number 57. 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. Open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Kim? What are we looking at? What is this machine? This is the Cupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. All right, all right. Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with a motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. What is this... F sinking feeling I have with the words motor carriage? Nothing, nothing. It's probably nothing. Forget I brought it up. Please proceed with the carefree lollygagging. Do all policemen in the RCM have such cool motor carriages? The Cupris Motor Car does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. Can we turn it on and drive somewhere? No, I'm afraid not. We have a murder case on our hands, remember? All right, all right, that makes sense. But what is a motor carriage, you know? A motorized vehicle, officer. I'm sure you are familiar with the concept. We've had these for nearly a century. Of course, I'm just testing you. I'm just testing In you. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pull out the toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. We're gonna take the red-tipped pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. As a weapon. Heavier than you'd to think. To kill. Cold and heavy. Like truth. Yeah. You feel like you're reunited with truth once more. We will also take the chain cutter. The handles are long <laughs> and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. And the flashlight. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue, blue. Lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. Push in the pull-out toolbox. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. Run your fingers over the steering levers. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Tap on the fuel preheater gauge. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch. Right, 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 heat. right, right, right. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Alternative translation. Don't even think. You can drive my MC. You son of a bitch came assistant subordination! I'll kill you! No, nah, we're cool. I'm gonna pick up the radio. The frequency tableau lights up, and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. Uh, come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker. Copy? This is Officer Alice Demetri, <laughs> precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, I need you to connect me to a civilian, uh, Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is her number, Officer? Kim, didn't Gart give you Sylvie's number? Yes. Hold on. Her here we go, is chat. 005. One nine four four two nine eight. Received. Hold on, officer. (laughs) 
start slapping a marching rhythm onto your thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Just wait. Relax. I'm relaxed. I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? A female voice greets you through the static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Sylvie? <laughs> Sylvie, hello! Uh, we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling in Rags. Oh, right. Hello, oh, officer. What can I do for you? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. Sylvia, I gotta ask if you killed him. Right now. There is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question about it. <laughs> you wanna grab a cup of coffee? <laughs> you quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm... Not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Wait, why are you... Why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? I... Uh... Let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. Get away from who? Who's after you? You know who. You think you hear a sliver of accusation in her words. Don't be paranoid. She's obviously talking about someone else, not you. I always trust Volition. You mean me? You need to get away from me? I really don't want to talk about this. Let's just forget about this, okay? Whatever you say, Sylvie. Seems like you do want to talk about this, though. Whatever, though. Maybe, I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. All right, whatever you say. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. All right, but why didn't you call? Didn't a corpse behind your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the corpse. I meant us. You should have called the police. No one calls the police. The Union would get angry. What the hell do you mean by that? You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Garbage. Garbage! I! Listen here, lady. I am the authority now. Okay. She obviously doesn't want to challenge your authority. You feel much better now. Tell me ex tell me why exactly did you let a corpse hang in your own backyard for weeks instead of calling us? I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. Let me get this straight. <laughs> you ignored the law to save your own skin. I, I didn't know I had to report it. I, I thought someone would take him down eventually. The fucking nerves on her. Trying to hide behind weakness. You're a god. An angry but just god. I am a god! You report to me! Not the union! Is it clear? Hey, if you cannot restrain yourself, then I'll be handling the interviews from now on. And you can quietly take notes. You got your methods, I got mine, Lieutenant. Now let me do my goddamn job! Fine. But know that I don't approve of such gratuitous volatility. An angry cop refusing to face his demons and taking his frustrations out on others. Just a badge and a gun away from those he's manhandling. A fast burning candle. That's the side you just exposed to the lieutenant. He doesn't judge. Has seen it too many times already. You both have probably, but he takes a mental note. Didn't pick the sorry option. Chat, look, there's a second mandatory rule that overrides sorry option, and it's and it's riding the wave that is authority every single fucking chance you can in this whole game. Do you understand me? You'll regret it if you don't. 
you have to ride the fucking wave of authority rolls whenever you get them because it's how you scream at mailboxes for getting in your way on the road. All right, you have to chase the authority. Breathing on the other end suggests that Sylvie is still on the line. She heard everything. <sighs> Do you know who made the call? No. I honestly don't know. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Okay, next question. Okay. Do you want to grab a cup of coffee sometime? No, no, no. <laughs> I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Empathy, medium 10. Wait, why does she seem angry with me? No, she doesn't have a problem with you. Oh. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy. Like Gart. Yeah, it's definitely some other guy. A guy like Gart. Fucking asshole. You know women and their constant problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. know. Nag, nag. Yep. How's one supposed to get the love going like that? True. That's where you step in. Your Lieutenant Love. Matchmaker extraordinaire. Oh my god. Help the poor girl out. Lest she turns into a spinster. Oh my god, not a spinster! Anything but a spinster! Yeah, she's a woman. Probably just playing hardball with the goods. Women are just transactional. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm happy to help, but maybe I could do so without all this internalized misogyny. What misogyny? I'm just telling things the way they are. Can't a man be honest in his own head anymore? You have to act, Lieutenant Love. You have to calm that hysteric down. Tell it you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with God himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? Oh my God. Please, no, I don't want any of those things. Refuse the love quest. Although it's wonderful. <laughs> I'm not. <clears throat> this is technically a quest. Are you still there, kiddo? Listen, I've got everything under control. No. What? You and Gart, right? A little trouble under the sheets. Say no more. Papa's got this, Big Papa. <laughs> big, Big Papa is happening. Big, Big Papa's gonna set these two up no problem. I got this all under control. Oh, oh God. Please, just stay out of my life. I've got a hunch your love life is your love life is about to take a very pleasant turn. Give the lieutenant a knowing wink. What? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh, you'll see, Lieutenant. You will see. You all see. Cole was dominated by the other party. Anything else, officer? Huh? She hung up on me. <laughs> it's on. The love quest is on. Too late, everyone. It's on. It's on! Back to God now. Yeah, uh, connect me to Sylvie again. She hung up. I, well, I need to hang up for authority. I need to prove to her that I'm in control. No, no, no. This game is amazing. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say this game's pretty amazing. Uh, I, I feel like I've done a pretty good... I've given you guys a pretty fucking potent taste already of what this game's deal is. It's... It's... The writing's fucking, like, just perfectly sticks to landing every single time it does basically anything. Could you connect me to the 41st precinct? I need to... I have something I need to report. Just a second, Ten two, ten five. This is forty first. Uh, come in, over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. Hi, this is uh me here. I work at your station. Then for what's your status? Over. My status? I, uh... 1018, 1020, over. Ah, uh, can you repeat that? 1018, 1020, over. Can you talk to me like a human? These numbers mean nothing to me. 
take your message, sir. Over. Uh, all right. I... This might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Then for your badge should have most of your personal details. Look over that. Over. I, uh... I don't have it. My badge. But you said... N never mind. 10-9, repeat message. Over. My badge. I can't find it. Basically, it's gone. 10-4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10-22 the captain. Over. 10-22 the captain. This sounds bad. Bad and scary. Like being called to the headmaster's office in school. Oh no. Is it him? What oh no. Oh no! Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. You what? He lost his badge? Hey! Who is this? This is communication officer Jules Pidieu, sir. Over. No, no, the other one! You mean your partner? Over. What is he saying? My partner! <clears throat> He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner! <laughs> it's your partner, satellite officer Dietmar, sir. Over. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking bed? The man in the background sounds like he's losing his patience. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the best seller, Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Son of a bitch, Encyclopedia, you might be right. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. <laughs> Come on, operator, tell them to stop. This is serious. Ha ha, officer lost his badge. Ha ha, like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh, God damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us. <laughs> Come on, operator. Tell him to stop. This is serious. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Satellite officer Vikmar conquers. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Can't we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. Sensor, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. All right, we gotta find our badge. Fuck me. Mac, come here. You've got to hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. What's going on? Super cop here lost his badge. Yeah, that's superstar cop to you, bitch. I say over the radio under my breath. That's superstar hobo cop to you, motherfucker. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Could you all just stop saying lost his badge for a second? Yes, you two, please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. <laughs> Oof! We, uh, definitely failed that roll! Uh, looks like we're gonna be replying with um, chat. Looks like it's gonna be an um. Uh... He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. They're laughing at me. Enough with this now! I have other things to discuss! Then come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. Oh no. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? I don't have my gun! No. It's gone. It's not fucking... On you. Don't sweat it, Bratan. Oh. You don't need a gun to have fun. We can still have fun. It's not all over. 
Oh my god, he's right. The necktie's right. 10-9, coming officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. 17% chance I convinced them I didn't lose my gun. Chat, do I have you guys roll and boost my fucking drama now? I need help! Pump it! Pump it now! I don't care what you debuff! Just boost something! Anything! You need to boost intelligence, I think, for drama. Which is very low for me. All right. 28%, we can take it, roll with it. But even before you can get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. No, of course I didn't lose my fun. Gun, Ugh. fuck it, I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't lose his gun, or his fun, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun, not his fun, just the gun will do. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Oh fuck, oh shit, oh fuck. Uh... The fuck do you need a gun for? Look at the pythons on your arms. You are a gun. The biggest one in the world. Oh, request a description, huh? We'll give him one. Describe the plasma gun. The plasma gun. <laughs> These answers are all very good. <laughs> Trick question. I'm a martial artist. My entire body is one big gun. It's a gun, what can I say? A regular goddamn murder weapon. You know how they are. Bang, bang. Whispered to the lieutenant. Kim, what kind of gun you packing? <laughs> For starters, it's massive. Got a flared cooling vents along the front and hydrogen flasks sticking out too. Then I'm come again, please. Over. It's got a magnetic accelerator, an arc that accelerates the magnetized, energized balls of periwinkle blue hydrogen-based plasma to near light speed. Uh, I'm going to need to put you on speaker for a second. Over. In contact, it detonates with the power of a dying star erasing every living thing from existence. Oh, did I mention it's dripping with sexy blue plasma? Sir is describing his genitalia in exaggerated terms. Over. Host in heaven. Did he lose his gun and his mind? Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> this isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here made him piss his pants. <laughs> Oh, I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his ask him if he still got his wiener. <laughs> I'm not going to. Ask him. Ask him now. Uh, Sergeant Dorson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. Wouldn't you like to know that, Mac? Now is a good time to say fuck and ass and so on. That'll make this all right. I don't need to listen to this. Firewalker out. <laughs> Slams the fucking phone down. I left it at his mama's after I fucked her ass all night. Tell him that. Tell him that right now. That's a negative. I'm not going to say that. Come on, Jules. Come on, play the... Come on, ref. Play the game fair. Come on, you gotta at least let me swing back, ref. What's he saying? Share with the class. He, uh, he said he sodomized your mother. The prick ate Mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. Oh. <clears throat> sure her vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. <laughs> <clears throat> Sergeant Orson requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. Hey, if you don't like the fallout, maybe don't fuck with the Firewalker! Mac, he says uh, you shouldn't have antagonized the Firewalker in the first place. <laughs> I can't apologize for that chat. Alright, we can't apologize. This is not an apology. The Firewalker, we gotta, we gotta, guys, we gotta slap back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is an authority play. 
This falls into an authority play. I gotta stand up for myself. Who? The disbelief in Vic Mare's voice is overwhelming. Satellite of Fire! Walker. Um, I'm afraid he might be referring to himself as Firewater, sir. Firewater? He's lost it. Fuck it. Tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters. Satellite officer. No, I think I'm good. I think I'm good without my gun. Thanks. I'm going to report that you are in pursuit of your service weapon. Over. Jules, you're a coward! In pursuit of his? Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. Ah, uh, I am, in fact, in need of dire financial assistance. Then, sir, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but... What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. all right. Uh, that's a negative on the additional sound, sir. Over. I leveled up. Immediately levels authority again. To eight. <laughs> Immediately, without delay, levels authority. Technically, chat, uh, if you want to play this game right, hold your points. So I'm actually not going to apply it yet. You want to save your points. Uh, because... You can level them up while you're in a conversation, and if you have all your points with you, uh, you can use them to like boost your stats right before you do a roll you really want to succeed. So always save one point. Don't need to save more than that, but always have one left over because then you can use it whenever you need it. Uh, this is paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. Please, I'm begging you here. I don't even have a place to sleep tonight. He says he's in trouble. Doesn't have a place to sleep. I'm gonna be on the street like a hobo cop. Well, I guess he'd better crack the case before sundown then. Uh, Vic Mar said. Who cares what this Vic Mar said? Pull on their heartstrings. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Enough, officer. This begging is below your dignity. Authority's right! Ah, fuck! Authority's right! I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I want to go home. Come get me. Right now. No, it's below us. We're a, we're a cop. We're the law. We don't fucking show weakness to anyone. We're a hobo cop. We're moving on. I heard you. No funds. Anything else, sir? That's all for Over. now. Jules. We're tough. We're not a bitch. 18 kilometers to the south, in the 41st Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier, around a dozen cops. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? What happened is my partner made contact. It's not good. He's lost his badge and his sidearm. He seemed confused, delirious even. Mac, the torso Torson, is finger-fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, Mac's right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before he started begging for money, it was... Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. Mino looks down at her neatly polished black shoes. There's a quiet firmness to her voice when she speaks. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on car juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. The crowd in the room has started fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to slip out on Max, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. This shit does not leave this room. 
Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to put his shit together. Bro. The gang. Bro. I guess I can hold up the report for a few days. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. Close the door. Yeah, chat. We're not gonna see much of it in this session. This game gets fucking heavy. Like, very heavy. This game doesn't act like it might seem goofy. This game gets fucking heavy. This one. Real fucking heavy. It, the comedy stuff knows when to stop very quickly when it needs to, and it's really strong because of it. Anyways, I'm gonna have to put us in emote mode in a second. <laughs> As we approach, we, we approach the room, the area. I might even just do it now. <laughs> Old call box. Just so I don't forget. Push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. We'll come back to this once we're done with the, with the body. Well, let me quickly save. Does this game have quick save? Oh, it does. Just saving it, just in case stuff like crashes and stuff. There it is, the body. Left it up a bit too long, unfortunately. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. 8% chance to succeed on that endurance. We can technically retry it, but let's keep moving without it for now. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. It's okay to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. Except for that little shit back there. He's about to blow. Shut the hell up, kid! I'm gonna let go of your nose without th my nose without throwing up. I'm gonna do it. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you've expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, uh! flushing you from within. Try to walk away. Walk away. Walk away. <laughs> Too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm so keep sorry. It. Thanks. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. I don't need that shit. Sure you do. You just threw up a lot. Okay, where do we get ammonia from? There is Frit nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't... There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Okay. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the wipe check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Okay. Hey, kid. Kuno's got this! The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. It's him. Chat, it's him. Oh yeah, not a comfy, Kuno! You're about to see why we're on emote only mode. <laughs> hey, kid! A word. Police business. Right in the dick, Kuno! Get him right in the dick! They ignore me. 
loving in the dick. They edited it out. That might be from the streamer thing. This guy used to have uncensored cusses. It seems that they've edited them out. I'm not opposed to it, <laughs> frankly. Stop throwing rocks at my crime scene. Stop using slurs at my crime scene. That's not how we do it. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Oh. Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! Kuno's riding it, see? God, these kids are fucking high. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. Kim, what do we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. Look, I got questions for you. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. All right, calm the fuck down, kid. Calm the hell down. The body, what do you know about it? Shitload pig, what's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Kim. Help me out here. What do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. You have no idea what the usual is. Just ask whatever comes to mind. Do you know who he was? Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. All right, Kuno. End of conversation. Very strong. You should be this stoic. Fuck, you're right, physical instrument. He's very confident is the problem about it. He's very fucking confident. Do you know how it got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happen? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. Oh, okay. Where'd you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... He's coming up with something. Mesk or, or... I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. Where the hell is Night City? Kuno gives this info out on a need-to-know basis. And you don't need to know. Kuno didn't smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. All right, all right. You seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. Oh my God. More on this later. Right now, let's talk about something else. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f Oh my God. About this crime scene, you kids often play in this yard? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? I might have questions later. For now, let's talk about something yeah, else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Listen, I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Kuno. Primal. Violent. Kuno. So you prefer to yourself you refer to yourself in the third person, huh? The fuck are you calling a third person? Kuno's the fucking first person? Right, right. He looks slightly confused. But proud, he came up with that retort. All right, all right Kuno. But right as he's getting distracted, you hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! Calm down. Anyone watching can see you're doing nothing. Just keep it professional. Fuck that! Confront him! Yeah, yeah, you're right, horrific necktie. It's time to take this kid down. It's time to teach him a lesson he'll never forget about disrespect. I'm not doing anything, see? Everybody, please! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Pigs are there in Kuno! Somebody, please! Shut him down physically. Don't punch him. It's a bad idea. Is it a bad idea, though? Is the thing, chat. Is it a bad idea, though? 
I am. All right, he he is the worst ever. Look, I'm not saying you should buff one of my stats. But it could be the worst experience of this character's fucking life if he misses. I'm not saying we could possibly become the most badass cop ever. Oh my god. This is going to be the most embarrassing fucking encounter in the entire game if he fails us, by the way. Ooh, ooh, look away, chat! <laughs> <laughs> ah! 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 You didn't shut him down. Your fat fist didn't meet its target. Instead, it pulled you down. My fucking knee! <laughs> My arm! Kuno can't believe this shit! <laughs> Can no one stop the Kuno? Pig, Kuno thought you had this. What happened? Kuno can do anything now. The power you gave him is too much to take. The whole charade was about to establish a dominance over you. It's safe to say he has succeeded. Fucked your no. shoulder, fucked ah! your fat body up! Someone call an ambulance! Officer, you need to get up. This is turning into a farce. That's what you get if you fuck with the Kuno. You get fucked up. Yeah, I deserved this. Yeah, you deserve this, trying to show your dick to Kuno. Kuno was scared. Listen to you, kid. You have any idea the shit you just got yourself into? Get up. You have any idea how fucked you are? <clears throat> Kuno's just gonna beat the shit out of you again. I told you not to tempt such forces. Now, how about we go and do something worth the public's time? Kim, you might be right, you might be right. Maybe we should take a look around. Fucking Kuno, chat. Fucking Kuno. Someone's trying to grow herbs in the greenhouse. There's ladders. Looking around for items. Lost to a child. Yeah. But if you succeed, you earn the respect of the small ones. And that's an important respect in this game, chat. If you succeed, they respect you. The letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. Let's just get the hell out of here. I gotta get some ammonia to look at the body. Also, let me equip... my... Pry bar. This will make me look more dangerous and more aggressive, which is very important. A heap of snow melts in this wheelbarrow. This must be the botanist. Yes. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? My partner told me you may have ammonia. Can I have some? Sure. I'm done with it. Thanks. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. All right, bye. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. Mm. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Look, one more thing, one more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Thanks. Nice. Plus one interfacing. Forever. We're a glove cop now. What well, about money? <laughs> now listen, you got any money? That would also be good. If you had some money. You got money? Sweetie needs money. All right, round two. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Hey, Kim. Hey, chat. Hey, Kim. You guys think we can pull this off this time? I'm not taking a skill boost in this yet. I won't do it. I refuse to boost endurance yet. You'd want to vote for red. 
17 percent here we go the ammonia only makes it worse. oh the combination forces tears out of us ah! you manage to keep it in once the second time not so much ah! when the is done, your cheeks are wet with tears how are you so good kim what the fuck I don't think I want to be a cop anymore. Get a hold of yourself. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds. Here. Yeah, you're right. Alcohol withdrawal makes I'm the best cop in the heart. 41st precinct. There's no way I'm not. You are being weak. This is weakness, and it cannot go on much longer. Or you will lose. Seriously, this isn't fun anymore. I don't want to be a policeman anymore. Why can't I keep it in? If I've been a cop my whole... Just give me, just give me a minute, I got this. Appropriate attitude. You need to get your shit together. You're right. But my shit already is together. No, it's not, officer. But maybe I don't want my shit together. No, the world will turn away from you and leave you behind. No. No. You will get your shit together. You're sure this has not affected his impression of you in a good way? My shit's never gonna be together. For a moment, the hanged man appears to smile. His lips are red, like a clown's. <laughs> Bitch fight, see? Bitches are at it. Mm -hmm. Bitches about to kill each other, I think. We should go and do something else. Give it half an hour. Then come back when you've gotten your act together. Big mistake, Kim. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Man, it's so hard to choose options that antagonize Kim because I like his character so much. 55% learned on Hobocop. Volumetric shit compressor. <clears throat> your shit is a part and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being it's supposed to be the opposite of that together compressed in a small area to achieve a solid level of shit compression squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain talk to people maybe that'll help i'm gonna start learning how to compress my shit all right let's go kill some time we have to kill 30 minutes of game time in order to compress my shit so let's start old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Main hall, building A. An off-key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then a woman picks up the receiver. Kuno, please stop calling here. Grown-ups don't have time for your stupid game. This is the police, ma'am. Open the door. No, I'm sorry, officer. I thought you were... But the doorbell is broken and the bookstore shouldn't even be on the list anymore. Oh, I can't help you. Please don't call here again. Thanks. Who do you think? A single beat she hung indicates up. that the line has gone dead. Andro Orlando Hair SCA. You ring the doorbell, but no one answers. Just seeing the words, Andro Orlando, gets your hackles up. <gasps> His very existence is a threat to your masculinity. <gasps> to say nothing of your hair. <gasps> Artemiteps boxing for young athletes in gym. All you hear is static, but no one answers the call. 24 hour window. You ring the doorbell, but nothing happens. I must fashion ad to you. wait for a minute or two, but all you get from the call box is silence. Fabrance. No one answers the Fabrance call. taxi. Looks like someone has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. The doorbell doesn't work anymore. Slipstream, slipstream SCA. You hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone. This is like a psycho thing to do. Receiver, I'm just like banging my finger on doorbells that don't anything. work anymore. Hello, is someone there? Yes. Hello. This is Tricentennial Electric. Hold on. Have you come to place an order? At uh, Tricentennial Electrics. I thought this was calling the Slipstream SCA. My God. The lieutenant exchanges a look with you. Sorry? It's you. Oh my god. 
I didn't think I would hear your voice. It's a woman, and she knows you. Your heart beats faster. No, something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? <clears throat> Stand up straighter. Yeah, it's me. Here I am again, crawling back into your life. Who are you? Where are you? Michelle, just please. Sounds like a ghost. Wind blows through your clothes and you feel detached from your surroundings. Inside the building, a cold memory hangs. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. <laughs> Hold on. Tell me what's going on. What did I do? Ever since I came to live here, it's been different. As if my mind's been wiped clean. A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally speak again. Get about what? She sounds like she's about to cry. The cold is deep under your skin, as if you were talking to someone who's a hundred years away. Somewhere inside the building, water is flooding the cellar floor. Please don't cry on the phone. She doesn't answer. Hey, you still there? Silence. The only thing you can hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. Yeah, I get it. You don't want to talk to me. No one ever wants to talk to me. Another seagull passes by. It's getting cold standing here, staring at the silent call box. It must have been some kind of faulty wiring. We should maybe stop playing with this doorbell. It looks ancient. Fuck! You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. We can call again with volition as high as we have. No. Hold on. The last thing you need in your life is more hysteric emotions. Forget it. Find something else to do. If we level up volition again, we can try that again and get more da get more info. Fortress accident S. Silence. No one's home. Never shall I sit. Silence. Main no hall. One. Silence. No one. Oh, sorry, that was East call. Delta Pinball. Uh, main hall, building B. Nothing happens after you ring the bell. Empty bell. car. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. I see. Huh. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. Well, let's get moving then. We still have. <laughs> A lot of time before my brain's done developing volumetric shit compressor. 15 more minutes of game time. And we can't get in there because that's blocked. So let's rummage through the trash. There are bottles inside. You could pick them up if you had a bag. I really need a bag. Let's check for bags. Mailbox. Oh no. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. Good mail delivery box. Fuck you, mail delivery box. Kick it. Ow! Fuck! There is a hollow, saddened ring as you kick the Levantorie mail collection box. It sounds betrayed. In disbelief, even, your toe has... Ow! Ow! <laughs> cool. You really showed that mail collection box. You think so? You think I was cool? I don't. Let's go. He must see the box as the weaker of the two, and you as a bully. Something he doesn't stand for. <laughs> Good mail delivery box. Good mail delivery box. The mail collection box has no faith in your psychopathic manipulations. Fuck. Shit. We gotta go. I gotta find food. I need something to heal me. Now! I only have one HP, Chet. There's a general store up here. I think it's this place. 
pathetic POV cop. Yeah. Classic. Flowers. Yellow roses, dozens of them, tulips too. Oh, ATM, maybe I can check out money. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, oh. one bottle equals 10 cents. What is this machine? Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. Yes, but what is it? It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine. Right, right. And it gives you money. Right, yeah, right. Hey, uh, how do I pick up tear for the tear machine? You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there somewhere. Right. Not very helpful, are you, lady? Food. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. What's that? What is what? Um, it's yeah. a raincoat. Raincoat. If you want to buy one, then it's only four real. I don't have that kind of money. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. Right, right. What's that magazine she's reading? What? What's that magazine you're reading? You mean this? This is Pop Stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's not for sale. I approve of this. Very futuristic. Tap on the girls kissing. No, I'm. I'm. <laughs> this is a really old kind. <laughs> Fucking stupid famous people. Not unlike me, a superstar cop. I should be in there. Yeah, they're kind of boring, but you know. Before we go on, what is this freak? I don't know. Frit. Frit. What is Frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store. Why is it written with three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. Let's proceed. I have some questions um, for you. Um, okay. I'm what? not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Yeah. Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Did you know the man who died? Not really. Does not really? Do you mean you knew him a little? Um, no. I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long. What do you think happened? Um, I don't know. You're dodging the questions. No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. Uh -huh. Thanks for your help. Listen, lady. I put my hands on the counter. Can you tell me anything about this reality we're in? Reality? Yeah. You mean, what reality? Economic reality, or? T yeah, tell me about the economic reality. I don't really know anything. I mean, I'm 15. Well, I'd say 15 is an excellent time to learn about the economic reality. Yeah, that's why I'm working my ass off in Frit. So I guess, like, that's economic. All right, well, what about the physical reality then? I don't know. What about it? Where are we? We're in Frit? No, I mean, where are we on a larger scale? As mankind or as a nation? Wait, or... shut the hell up, lady. I just finally got my shit together. Can you give me like a fucking second to process the amount of shit I just got together? Shut the hell up. Our shit is officially together. Oh, yep, there it is. The solution to our shit. It's... It's almost together. Breakthrough imminent. Ah! Uh, we're getting close. We're almost together. We're close, Jack! Uh, yeah. As a mankind, uh, what is our reality like? In a good place. You think? I mean, science is doing great, and this radio computer thing seems to be kind of big. I don't know. 
Yeah, what time is it? I don't know. Look at the clock. It's right behind you on the wall. The clock shows the time at 10.09. The hands seem to be still. It's apparent the clock doesn't work. What is the revolution? When ordinary people take over the government and um, demand democracy. What about the one we had here in Revachal? Yeah, it happened like 50 years ago or so. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. The coalition. History, I mean. What's that? Someone told me Our there was government? one. government? Or do you mean something else? Sorry, I really yeah. need to finish this. You seem talking. like you're wasting my time anyways. We're done here. Oh. I'll see you later. Ah! Oh, my brain! All of the shit in my brain is compressing! Bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today. Ah! Police officer's shit ah! has been observed at a pressure of ah! 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness <laughs> are thought to be <laughs> only at the center <laughs> of collapsing stars, not law officials. Oh. It remains to be seen how long the shit's singularity lasts. My shit is officially together. I could also choose to forget my shit being together to make space for other slots, but I won't be. Kim! It's time. Yes? You seem to be following me. Excuse me? Beat it. You're cramping my style. You've been cramping. Now that my shit's together, I don't need you anymore. What if I want to work this case alone? No, nothing. It's just an you observation. You have a, a distinctive way of working. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. What do you mean by distinctive? I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jamrock Shuffle. Officers from Jamrock's 41st precinct tend to move a bit erratically. How's that? They say it's a scene-clearing technique developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic, yet <laughs> thorough. Prioritizes containers. You're kidding me. That's racist. I don't prioritize containers. I'm sure you don't. It's just a stupid interdepartmental thing. I'm making assumptions. We should move on. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's messed up. Passing along frivolous interdepartmental stereotypes is not usually his oeuvre. He regrets bringing it up. I think you should know that I can't remember anything, Kim. No response. He just arches his brow. All right, I feel like I gotta repeat this. I don't remember anything. There was heavy drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There is a sudden, harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. But I'm completely lacking in basic information about even this organization we're in. Can you help me? Fine. We should get through this day first. Off hours begin at 9 p.m. If you're still having trouble then, I can give you an orientation. All right, so what should I concentrate Try on? Try work. The case at hand. It can work miracles. And Kim, what is wrong with my personal affairs? Not a fan. It's just the nature of lieutenancy. I'm afraid this is a medical situation. Really? You look fine to me. I'm talking serious, unbelievable damage here, Kim. I saw myself in the mirror and had no idea who I was. This psychodrama is unbecoming I've... of an officer. Unspeakable things have been done to my body and mind, Kim. It's not psychological. It's some sort of major brain damage, Kim. On an unprecedented scale! Then you should consider seeking medical attention. You can use the radio in my kinema to call your station's lazarus. Oh. Was there anything else you wanted? Uh, listen, Kim, I want to talk about you. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. You're right. What's there to know about a lame binoclard? No, come on, Kim. Open up a little. <sighs> if you insist. Come on. What do you want to know? Tell me a secret about yourself. No. Come on. Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. 
The eyebrow is exercising psionic what? control over you. What's happening to me? Something the matter, detective? This guy has got authority off the tips. With just the flick of his he's, eyebrow, he's able he's to the law. in his thrall. Oh, what do I do about it? Nothing. You better hope he doesn't abuse his authority. There's a lot of it. Scream for help silently. If the lieutenant were an evil man, who knows what sort of havoc he could wreak. Fortunately, he is a committed officer of the RCM. He'll only use his powers for the good of the investigation. This guy's got level 20 authority. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control of yourself. You're wearing glasses. That's correct. That makes him a Beano clad. Completely uncop material, if you say so yourself. Gla glasses are cool. <laughs> I didn't know they let Beano clads become cops. <laughs> Glasses are epic. Are they? They are mostly just cumbersome. You could use a good, normal peer yourself. Do you ever talk with yourself, Kim? What do you mean? You know, when you're thinking, do you ever have conversations with, like, your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. So how do you, you know, tap the side of your head like a psycho? What? Think? I do most of my work inside my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's where his conversations with himself take place. You're super lucid, yet psychedelic. You don't need office supplies to connect to your nervous system. You're special. You don't look like the other people around here. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul, so was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. What is Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. You're, not make you're only making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know more about Seoul. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seoul. I'm a regular Revachelier. Seems most proud of these things. He's glad to have shut down your question. All right, that's all Good. for now. Let's Just leave. I need medicine. How much does medicine cost? A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the San Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Um. Just ask me if you need anything from Seoul. Mm. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nosafed, Duramine, Magnesium, and Hypnogamma. We need 250 for Duramine. Okay. That'll heal me up to full. Damn, man, taking a swing at Kuno was bad idea city. Huh. Should not have taken that swing at Kuno. We just need to find a bag of... A bag for trash, you know? Magnesium? Look, we just rummage through enough garbage and eventually we can find the money we need and, you know, buy what we need. Almost got a dollar. Bought a bingus. Yeah. Welcome to Ivashol. The man's remark isn't addressed to you, it's addressed to the lieutenant. Hey, I know Revachal. That's where we are. Don't you welcome to Revachal me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000-year-old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in the city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. The lieutenant's impassive mask has been replaced with intensity. He speaks not as a cop, but as a citizen, he is Vachonier, a Revacholian. Yeah, you tell him, Kim. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. Limbo, what's going on here? Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Revachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here, that I should watch myself and behave. 
But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job. Yeah! I'm sure you behave. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Fucking A, Kim. I've got your back. Give the lieutenant a punch on the shoulder. You do make a cute couple. You know that. The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. You sense slight embarrassment for the outburst. Or is it pride? Impossible to tell. Now that that's settled, we have a couple of questions. What is all you say, officers? Gotta smoke? Listen, you gotta smoke on you, man. What was that argument all about? Uh, it's about biological determinism. Uh huh. The uh -huh. sorting of the races. Uh huh. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like, come on, sheep. Change the topic. The way he says it makes it almost sound like a threat. Oh, so you're you're just a racist. Makes sense. I'm not just racist. Look, I've read books. Huh? The science of racial theory has all been proved, even if uh, some people don't want to accept it. People who've studied these things say that uh, you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Yeah, I can really tell you're a prime example of superior design. Open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe, huh? When members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. Okay, and... This concerns you, policemen, so you better be vigilant. The damn kits are showing up good lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other intruder species, too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Uh-huh. It's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birth place? You might end up with a new sub-race, with unknown characteristics, leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the offspring. Yeah, I'm not down with this. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Don't push your luck, Runt. The man gives you a disgusted look, then turns his attention elsewhere, ignoring your presence. Yeah, you can just choose to be a racist cop in this game. It's built in. You can be. A glossy magazine, most able-bodied men. This issue hosts a top ten list. Oh no, they're much hunkier than you. You shouldn't feel threatened by handsome men. Don't be silly, let's get the fuck out of here. I really need that money. I gotta get money so bad. I really need to heal. I'm like afraid to go back to the body without healing because I'll take more physical damage and then I'll be permanently dead. So let's find some shit to like loot. That isn't that fucking mailbox. This coin operated viewer has been banged up. Inoperable. We just need a, just need a garbage bag. What's this here? Yad reads broken window. Tibbs has windows. Garbage bags. If you had a bag in your hand, perhaps you could collect these bottles and sell them. I don't have a bag in my hand. I need a bag. Right. Just gotta get a bag and we'll be right as rain. Oops. Inside the frame of a motorcycle in repair and the tools used to disassemble it. Just taking a quick sweep around. I guess we can go back to the body. We should be able to take it now that we've gotten our shit together. This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Yeah, why am I looking at it though? Conceptualization. You have no clue. It's just a wall. Right, right. So many walls all over Martinez. Weather-worn, cracked, their paint peeling. Okay, bye. Bye-bye, wall. 
money. And more magnesium. Well, if I ever need morale boosters, I can easily get that. A garden hose. This won't be of use until the snow melts. Chairs and tables eaten by the rain and rot. Looking for healing. Oh! And no Safed. All right. Put the hat on right now. An orange beanie with a couple of big ass holes on the side. It looks like it might have been used as a mask during an armed robbery. Uh, gives us higher reaction speed, but lower rhetoric. We got bum brain. We got bum brain, baby. Locked. I look at it suspiciously. These barrels are half full of rainwater. You see that? Coat there. We gotta get in that. Are right, we gonna loop back around to the body? Do our thing. Time to get back to work. We gotta. We are officially the most shit togethered cop ever, chat. It's time. If there's anyone that could get their shit together as good as me, I'd like to see them. Alright? Because my shit is together. And it's also about to be hobo copped. Okay. Okay. We'll talk to all these extra characters once I've dealt with the body. There's gonna be- there's, we got plenty of time. Alright. Round three. There he still is, looking right through you, with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated Please. to that if you will, chat. smell. Emitting it is all it does now. If you will. As you <sighs> open, the odor comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands <sighs> on your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. Right. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. What kind of boots are these? They are armor, no boots. Technically speaking, these are sabatons. Okay, what kind of armor is Ceramic this? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500 VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced. What though. happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. Right, right. We should keep a look up for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. No, no, we are not going back to Kuno, man. He, I, I, I've already lost to him. If you wear those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. Why does my mortal coil need protecting? Yes, bullets will fly. Does they it need mortal? Do. Does it need protecting? And the coil is fleshy and mush and right, permeable. Right. Cast it in ceramic shell. Resist death. Maybe he was wearing these boots and there is no rust of the armor no he must have worn something precious underneath his clothes they've removed all his clothes to get to it they did not just trip him for the putrid rags why then then where are these clothes have you seen any around someone could have cleaned the yard but that's a question for the red-haired thing the red-haired thing i hear you cop talking shit <clears throat> about the kuno come here and say it's a kuno's face Fuck you, Kuno! No, I'm not gonna... What if they told him to strip before they hung him, to demean him? They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre. 
the Mazda, the Besmerty, and the like. This one still has his underpants. Right, right. What? Are you trying to ignore me now, fuckface? Kino, you know, this boots shit is super boring, and the guys are total vidupas. <gasps> the material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. Lieutenant draws a line in the condensation on the ceramic with his index finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Cha-ching, baby! Nods to the boots. By catching, do you mean... Let's not log them as evidence. Let's steal them. What was that about the constabulatory before? You need to push some buttons if you want to recruit the lieutenant in a conspiracy. Listen, if this constabulatory is dragging their feet, why not start ourselves before more good men die? So they don't get shot in the foot? I think our extremities are fine without the dead man's boots. Ah. Uh... Oops. Well... No one said it would work. Back to detecting now. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbor Company. But that's just hearsay. He's look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air. Like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. The pry bar in your hand is itching for some action. Sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally, from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint, organic lines cover the plates, where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates. Right, right, until right, right. There right, are right. hundreds of them. Altogether. Right. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. Pull the boot off. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Not really. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Let's back off Ageless and keep looking and at the corpse synthetic. for now. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos, and extremities blotched pink and blue. Inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Oh my, there's something on the belt. A familiar word that speaks to the thirst Oh no, within. electrochemistry, pl please, you got us, what, what's the word? Vermilion, in oh yellow God. letters, along the length of the twisting cargo belt. Oh. A deep longing for Vermilion Golden Spirits <sighs> lets you decipher the fading logo of the local brewery. This is a bad time for a drink, right? Extremely. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength. The can used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus. When the circus leaves town and they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. Like in a circus? For transporting giraffes? Uh, no. More like in uh, Harbor, like the one just east of here. I get the sense they used whatever was on hand, without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. Right. They sure want him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. Rabbits? This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. We're assuming the dock workers from the harbor did it. The then. brief suggested as much. Politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? My past has undergone total annihilation, Kim. Nothing remains. My mother, the love of my life, certainly not a briefing. Okay, you should ask me for one the first moment we get. How did they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. All right. I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt, buckle closes. It's what I would do. Seems easier than climbing out there. Back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt. Limbs limp, 
and torso covered in Inspect tattoos. Inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Your fist clenches suddenly. It'll be riddled with disco. Decay is creeping on the tattoo. Already, most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now, it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. Is this a national pattern? Of no nation that I know of. If anything, it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century. Men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship. But which one? I see no trace of a humanoid figure. I see, I see. The pattern does not stir patriotic or religious sentiment in you. What it does is speak to the wounded, limping animal, the male in particular, unable to communicate in anything more than grunts. It's impossible to tell if its advice is right or wrong. I'm missing something here. So am I. Wait, what are you... Kim, what are you grabbing over there? What are you doing? What is that thing? He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium oh. from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What the lieutenant work? Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampules and clicks them into place on the sides of the apparatus. A thin slot shines. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. I have only two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound. Ah! A sword flash, followed by the breaking of a small there it ampoule is. of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper. My eyes! In case we need it. Cool machine. Yes. It is pretty cool, isn't it? So what do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glassy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. You've acquired an interactable item. Oh. Investigate this item further by going to the interact tab in your inventory. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind. Really squirm him up. Make him respect me. Now! From their sockets. There is no one home. Just sub-aquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready he's to He's gonna explode respect me from now! The processes inside. Or he's dead! The death's Again. Death grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Underneath the curdled meat there is an expression. Not carried on his features, but below. Inside. An expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. Tell me, who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Where have you gone? Into the wow pile yonder. Where is that? In the past, way out west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke, look at me. There's nothing funny about you. There is nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Takes one to know one. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. What's happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... 
black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Imagination. Yeah, man! Don't be <laughs> crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you! Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. The tie, man! It's the fucking tie! He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copper rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah, give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, copper rooney rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Uh, I do strike myself as a Rooney. No, you don't. Between uh. you and me, your name is probably Harry. That's the second time we've heard that, so we can operate on an assumption our name is Harry. But Harry who? Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you? <laughs> love did me in, Brother Copo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eyes. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Well, because he told me to. Nods towards Kim. Maybe this will lead to something. Something indescribable. Unforeseen. Miraculous. <laughs> the clown lips on the corpse's... On the corpse appear to smile. The face rotates before you slowly. Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest. And it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. I hate you! You stink and you're boring! Do I remind you of someone? A baby affected with harlequinism. <laughs> uh, a deep sea creature. No, not quite. Be fair now. You sure wrinkled out of that one, Coppolini. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. Is that true? First, do you have to speak like that? What dialect is that anyways? So you were feeling sexual arousal when they were hanging you? Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to you? Mm, what is erotic auto asphyxiation? Captain Corpo Dromo, I fear we are drifting away, fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. Chat, for context, you don't even get to talk to this guy at all if you have not taken Inland Empire. If you fail that role, you never talk to this guy. You never get any of this dialogue. That's why Inland Empire is such a good thing to spec into, at least a little bit. It does give you a ton of game. That's like completely locked away otherwise. We've had Come enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. All right, man, let's take a squint and step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. Kim, I'm, I'm squinting, Kim. Why am I doing it? How should I know why you are squinting, officer? Ah, uh, squint harder. His face and hands are pink, thighs too. The rest is greenish. Oh. <clears throat> you are trying to assess lividity. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. Right. His stomach appears pregnant with something. <laughs> Black liquid streams down his <clears throat> thigh. This is a seven day him. old body chat, like hanging on a fucking belt on a tree. So, what do you think? I think he's dead. 
I agree. There are crow's feet in his eyes. He's laughing silently. Totally dead. Yeah, totally. This buster's not coming back. No siree. I agree. The rock totally dead. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. I agree. The rock totally dead. Deady, dead, dead, dead. Dabba doob doob dead. <laughs> I agree. The rock totally dead. But what is dead? He's. Ah, yes, very good. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spot. Yeah. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. Oh my god, I want to throw these kids in a garbage bin and push it down the river. I don't know what to think. What do you think? I think he was upright immediately after death. Blood has gathered in his hands and feet. And his neck. The noose acted like a tourniquet. Keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis here is in tune with the hanging. That's what I think. Mm. Seems like a lynching to me. Everything here seems to corroborate that assumption. But we should still get him down before signing a probable cause of death. Something is coming out of him. The pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it. Drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <laughs> Talking about shit. <laughs> that's a fucking, that's a power play, dude. I don't, I'm not, we got lucky. Did we? I don't feel lucky. He didn't eat as much as he could have. Let's back off and catch our breath. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you. So how do we... Composing. How do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's down. Uh, let me step the back and have one more The slowly leave. twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos. I have something I need to know, corpse man. Of course. Okay, no, we've got him. Come back. Yep, let's cut him down. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. Yeah, yeah. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Maybe we could ask for help from the harbor. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appear to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Right. Confirmed. It's unsafe. Yeah, wait, let's reconsider. But what other options? We could saw the, the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Either one of us could do it. Uh, we could use the kid's ladder on the side of the tree. Don't trust that ladder. The assailants didn't use it. It's rotten and less sturdy than it looks. And I don't see another good way of it. Honestly, I prefer a non-acrobatic solution to this. Ah, uh, yeah, it seems to There has to be a less risky way. Maybe we could... Falling down after Maybe we could shoot it down! Yeah! Bang, bang, time pig! Shoot his head off! How? I don't know, you know, shoot up there maybe, point at the branch. Yes, the buckle, where it ties the cargo belt to the tree. If the shot hits that, then there might be a small chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. The Kuno. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. Take the shot, lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? I'm not going to take the shot, chat. My stats are not friendly with motorics. I would fail, so I'm, I'm gonna let him take the shot. Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst that could happen? I'll blow his head off. Mm-hmm. Take it. We already take the shot. we already examined the body there. Yeah, take the shot. Kuno wants some of that shit. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the Lieutenant unzips his jacket. Cam, oh my God, he's really gonna do and it. And produces a lightweight <laughs> firearm. Oh. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. 
He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Say nothing. He's gonna fucking miss! The chick's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke. He fucking missed! In the air. Typical of a four eyes! Back God damn it! Himself. Should have left it to the professional me. God damn it. He feels bad about it. About his eyes mostly. Just having bad eyesight. Probably from a young age. Whatever oh. you do, do not console him. Okay. Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno is not fucking handicapped, is he? What now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Yeah, we're gonna need to ask the harbor. We have to get it down. Okay, they do have the tools and the men. And since it looks like they put him there... <laughs> yeah, they can get him down too. <sighs> okay. I'm not going to try, chat. Way. Chat, remember, I'm playing on Honor Rule Hardcore. I need to preserve my fucking emotional well-being. Especially when it comes to physical events. Like shooting a gun. What if I fuck up and I knock my nose with the gun recoil and just fucking slam my face? How do we get inside the harbor? From the gates, by negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or... We can try to find some secret third path. <laughs> Tonight, Lido. To the gates. Let's fight, I say. But won't it be dangerous? To ask the suspect for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Everard Claire? Very much, yes. Everard Claire. Which is why I would have preferred us to handle this ourselves. Man, we are pathetic. The sorriest really pathetic cops. Suck my dick, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> Who's Everard Claire? The leader of the Union. A dangerous and corrupt man, from what I hear. You don't want to owe him much. Yeah, don't go being someone else's bitches. Your Kuno's bitches. Let's get to it then. Ah, my brain! Hobo cop. Hobo cop! Uh, uh. Technically, you wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures, but. Who knows where the hobo part takes you? To the bar? The old Lassamoir? To the pier or the sewers? To Le Royam, where for 300 years they interred the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long forgotten triple malt bourbon, then fight the Ardamakan beast that lurks the bottommost sepulchres. The secrets of the city are all yours at last. Reveals extra special collector's edition Tare bottles on the map. More money from selling Tare. I really need a bag. But we've now subscribed to both Hobocop and Volumetric Shit Compressor. We're incredibly powerful right now. Chad, we're only gonna get stronger. Let's take a look around. Swinch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material Etonite. Chat, give me a little bit of, give me a little bit of yellow, huh? Come on, let's find out what this pile of crap is. Come on, this is a white check. Come on, hook me up, hook me up with a little bit of yellow, right now. Fucking kidding me, chat? You and you plus intelligence? Well, then I'm not rolling it. <laughs> It's a white check. I don't have to do it. Chat doesn't understand. I don't have to take that check. We don't know what to increase. Yellow is motorix. If it, if you, it's, I'm guessing it shows you the colors. Yellow is motorix. Red is physique. Purple is psyche. Blue is intellect. Oh my god, look it up, idiots! Use your fucking brain! Stupid! Stupid, dumb, dumb. Dumb, dumb, stupid chat. To no one's surprise. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a 
traveler. Man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. I, I'm the law. You sure are, my man. I'm the law. You sure are, my man. You sure, you, you sure are, my man. What's going on here? The jam, my man. The jam. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, an all around clusterfuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Limbo, huh? Days. So that's where I. So that's where I. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how long have you been here? It feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. Extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? Can you spare some change? You know anything about the dead man, the one hanging in the host behind the hostel there? Point the yard. He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Ah, I see, I see. What? Nothing. All right. I'm just messing with you, man. Don't mind my idle verbosity. What are you hauling anyways? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms. What? Stuff like that. Time to arrest him. What? Ugh. You're under arrest, my man. Ha, no, I'm joking, my man. Found runs a nice, clean business. This hollow cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad and the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. So nothing illegal then? Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. Could I get one of those FALN track suits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Right. I have another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against Listen. his arm. I am a hobo cop now. It's in my nature. You got any spare change for working stiff? Huh? Oh. No, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. Who? They who? The bosses, man. Makes sense. I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me. Or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down in his luck. If I had, say, four myself. Right. I'm good for now. Good talk. Don't be a stranger. I like him. I like that guy. He's one of my favorites. Let's keep looking around for now. Looking for crap on the ground I can pick up. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing towards the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philippe III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Rebishal. Son of Philippe II, the opulent. Father of Philippe IV, the insane. Not a good track record of mental health in that family. I don't even want to talk to Encyclopedia. <laughs> I'd rather not talk to Encyclopedia, if I'm going to be honest. I'm going to steal the cargo, though, from this place. Money. Thanks for the money, assholes. Hey, old lady. The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... Grandma? Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Grandma? Her hair is gray like no. This one is a monster in disguise. Wait a minute, what? Snap your fingers in front of her face. Wait. She's just a distracted old woman. 
Better to leave her alone. Why? Why? I just told you why. If you say so, Ken, but really. The woman still excuse me, ma'am. Her eyes fixed. I'd like to ask you some questions. In her hand, no response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. We'll talk later. Old lady. Chat, you see the points? I just have to I just have to bulk up my authority to the point where Kim can't stop me anymore, and we're getting close to having the second point. After that, they won't be able to slow me down anymore. I'll be a god. Understand? Kim can't stop me forever. Eventually, I'll have more authority than him, and it won't matter anymore. I want to go grab whatever's in this. And Laurie's stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. Look in the window. The windows are clear. They've been recently Level washed. Up. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings. Stickers, insignia. What kinds of stickers and insignia? The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. Racist nationalist paraphernalia, not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. He nods towards the racist lorry driver. You think this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. He was acting tough before. This probably scared him a bit. Who knows when it will come in handy. A slightly scared, racist lorry man. Ah, yeah, Half-Light, yeah. We got an edge on him. He's scared of us, and we know his fucking vehicle number. Yeah. And the law. Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad-shouldered alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than everybody else here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Okay, then I'm thinking no. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. It shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Did they change the old voice actor? I remember the old voice actor sounding a lot more goblin-esque. I like the old one more for this. It's not a huge downgrade, but I, I like the old one more, and he had a lot of lines. The old voice actor is almost fully voiced for this guy. What kind of cause are we talking about? Rights of people, rights of workers, to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and Kuno feed got changed their too. Yeah, well, <laughs> Kuno's voice actor made me, not their fault, but the voice made me want to tear my fucking ears out. But I guess that was by design. I don't think I've chosen any sides yet. Might be time. Don't let the fat bastards tread on you. Cops tend to side with the higher ups, but you're essentially still workers. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand the right to work. Right to work. Regardless, I have some questions for Maybe you. Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like, why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. So do we, Scott. So, uh, I want to get into the harbor, too. Have fun. <laughs> Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. I'm trying to meet that fat boss. Ah, uh, this is an official matter not to be discussed with outsiders. Right, so work! It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up, open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. 
This isn't really my area of expertise. We are not picking a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. Let us work! So, I'm just gonna be going now. There's a whole lot to unpack there, chat. It really is. Scott? He asks me? What did he just what? call you? A Oh no, not this again. You just got away from that fucking kid. I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here, to the wild north? Come to see the strife? I'm looking for assistance with a dead body situation. Body still hanging in the tree? Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a rough pickle. Can't help you with that, sorry. I'm not really an admirer of dead bodies. Might be someone else from the Union can render assistance. Does that mean you'll let me through the gate? I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a granter of passage. The passage grants itself. Beneath the jolliness, he suddenly seems doubtful. That's simple. I just walk in. Aye. Walk right past Measurehead and go in. Past Measurehead? Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremus is there. Walk right past him. Right. Then press the button to unlock the door. Uh-huh. Then go past him again. Okay. And you enter the arbor through the office. Esta. For some reason, I don't seem like it's gonna be that easy. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation. Unlikely. Or you could convert to a semini supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. Has anyone ever bested him in a uh, physical confrontation? Not yet, no. He's incredibly strong. Right. Nothing a couple of solid hooks from Dexter and Sinister won't fix. Have any of the scabs tried converting to his worldview? Jean-Luc himself would say the philosophy has proven overly heroic for the scabs to convert to. Not enough intuition. Got it. Another thing. Sure. Uh, I'm a bit short on money. Can you spare, spare sure me thing, some? My friend. I can help you out. He flips a coin towards me. I'm gonna try to catch it. The coin lands Got into it. your hand as if it has always belonged there. The swallow returns. Thanks. Always glad to help out the RCM. Shame I can't do more. Things are meager at the moment due to... You know, the winter's fat is slowly running out and all. Still better than scabbing, though. Every little bit helps, you know. I'm always glad to help out when possible. Not like these slithering scabs. Nice talk, gotta get moving. Quick saves his game. Quietly turns on emo only mode and approaches measure head. <laughs> Prepares for his permadeath game to reach its conclusion. betrays his degeneracy. My body betrays my degeneracy. Don't say anything. Size him up first. I size him up. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? A ripple passes underneath his skin. He lets you look. You must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. Puff out your chest, still say nothing. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? He looks down at you, taking stock of your physique. Merely standing up makes you sweat profusely. Shit, son of a bitch! Your breathing is erratic. God your damn own it. heart beating your ears. I'm cracking under the pressure! frantic and you feel your blood pressure rise. Stop it! 
You are uh. embarrassing yourself in front of this woman and your epidomorphic friend. <coughs> this display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct, but it is a liability here on Battlefield Martinez. Jean-Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Shut Maybe up, lady! You can ask him to leave. What do you mean my body betrays my degeneracy? You have succumbed to Al Hul. His face contorts in disgust as if he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al Hul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Kim, is it really that bad? It's not good. You're right. I'm an alcoholic, and I need that dead body to no longer be in the tree. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Ham sandwich raise is Wayne. Is that what I am? Ham, a ham sandwich? Show him the ham still got it. Actually, I think the ham sandwich race still has it in them. Willingly calling yourself a ham sandwich. How I can't keep up with this shitty saying, chat. Fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world. Eugenics. This guy's dancing all day. over me! And powerful weapons of war, like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. What? You dominated lesser cultures. I'm gonna go like out. The I'm gonna go like, turn on the lights. I'm waiting for food to get here. You guys hang out with measure obsessed quakers. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Hey, okay. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There's no way she knows what the fuck he's saying. There is a button right behind him, just out of Son of a bitch. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. This man is not budging. Let's hope his superiors inside are more cooperative. Come on, I just need to, you to move about 20 centimeters back. It is my task to keep the degenerate trunks from entering the harbor. Listen here, it was your people who put that dead body up there. You should help us get it down. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Simenai Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles. Looks at Al watch. Food. Notes the clock. Sees measure head is still talking. Continues to think on my ideology of I guess being a ham sandwich. And think about what would what would change if I was instead salami. Hurt, hurt, think brain hurt. This is your chance. He's talking. Rip into him with a punch and catch him off guard. Oh my god. No, don't rip into anyone. You're sensitive. Remember? Communicate. This is one of the hardest roles in the game, but if we succeed it, we look like the greatest badass of the modern age. Chat. <laughs> now, if I were to level up physical instrument twice, I may stand a chance with the addition of a buff. I'm also willing... No, I will not reload if I fail, but I might die if I fail. Oh, fuck. It is now a 42% chance. Chat, you need to level up. In order to attempt this, I need you guys to level up my physique. 
Right now! We need physique now. I need physique boosted. It's the only chance we get by this. 58% chance! Please! Yeah, baby! Oh! Just like that, instinct took over. A solid strike straight into his throat, into the cartilage. You could swear you felt the soft palate break. We're about to send Measurehead to the next life, ham sandwich style. The man is reeling, gasping for air. Time stands still around you. In the distance, the sounds about of to the give him the turkey club. Silent. He's open. Rip into him. Right hook. Escalate it. Get intimate with him. Bring the hurt closer. Back up and perform a 360 degree flying spin kick. Right now. Oh! <laughs> Eat shit! The man lands with a dull thump, like a broken down puppet of muscles and sinew. For a moment, he still tries to keep his head up, dazed eyes looking at you with unimaginable surprise. To your left is the button. Disco Inferno. Press the button. As you slam your fist on the button, the man collapses entirely, his head rolling to the side. Looks like you're the new measure head now. I'm the new measure head now. Her voice is surprisingly calm. No one is the new measure head. Let's go before he gets up. Yeah. I'm sort of a badass. See, chat, that is why you save your points in this game. Because there's no reason to spend them until most of the time until you know exactly what you want to pass, and then you sink two points into that roll and, you know, boost your odds of succeeding significantly. That started as a 17, and yeah, we used Twitch integration too, but even with the 42, it was highly possible. But, yeah. The alternative was me again looking like an idiot, like when I swinged at Kuno <laughs> and broke my elbow and shoulder. It's best to play this game without ever re-rolling. Just for the record, it's best to commit to every fail because it feels a lot better when you succeed afterwards. And now this uh, door over here should be open. In case of strike, press button behind guard. Yeah, let's go. Let's get someone to cut down that fucking body. Also, the fails are great. Yeah, the fails are great in this game. And sometimes they're even successes in their own right. You just don't know until you've done them. All right, let's go find the boss. Every worker equals member of the board is written on top of the flyers. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model, na the model name is on the back. A lot of stuff in here. Standard office file cabinet. Drawer seems to be locked. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Let's see what's inside. Open it. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara, and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many from districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Volition 10, force yourself to go through the folders. Look how blurry oh! all the lines on these papers are. How unwieldy your own will. Fail to fucking 92%. You're like an absurdist samurai monk. Well, Focus we got the roll for the kick, Focus. so I guess we were owed that. If I let my eyes go out of focus, all the shapes start melting into each other. Is that what you're doing with those folders over there? No. Good. This is probably not relevant to our case anyway. We can come back to, to this if we level up volition. investigating an accounting mystery. 
Anytime that we level up and it's a white check, you can reroll it. Slides. So that's fine. We don't miss out on that yet. Someone left the coffee machine on. Dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. Postcard. We can sell these. Oh my god. Visual calculus minus one drama. Neat office shades. The look is coming together. And some more magnesium. So really no healing items, but everything else. Get a lot of everything else. Got a book here for... Uh, I believe we can read these for like skill points and stuff. Oh yeah, aren't I supposed to also interact with this photo? An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man. From the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time the lines intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. The pattern still kind of has an ethnic feel to it, but nothing familiar. What's the meaning of this tattoo? For you to discover. You've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone closer to the victim might know. Yeah, we'll have to find that. The front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical portrait of the late King Friso. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. Flip through the pages, see if anything catches my eye. To your disappointment, there aren't any full color pictures oh. to direct your attention. I hate reading! Just column after column of close. I want to spin kick more people! Interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. After rifling the pages with your thumb several this book times, sucks. you return to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International developments. We're gonna move on for now. There's a lot of there's a lot of lore to get to in this game, but I am streaming, and uh this is a one-off probably, so. I'm not gonna go through every single lore thing. That's something for you guys to do once I give the save out if you would prefer. One off stream. Guys, this is a long game. This is a very long game. And on top of it. Ooh. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. There is a white rectangle clearly visible on its back. This is your cloak. Lieutenant. You feel it. I think that's just my I think that's mine. Yes. It does bear the RCM insignia. And we are the only detectives in Martinez. You think I should get it? The service cloak issued to you by your station? Yes, yes I do. Mine. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort through your fingertips. I will shield you from the elements and give my life for yours. The cloak's on my side. That's what the cloak is relaying. I mean, there's a chance, but it's not a high chance I play through the whole game, chat. The second day onwards gets a lot more real, if you know what I mean. That's a very good cloak. That gives plus one shivers, too. There's a chance. Collecting rainwater. Lots of bottles. I need to get a bag still to grab all these. So many bottles, in fact. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red. All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone party. Really, really hard here. Did I do this? Well, yes. I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. This is really sad. I must have been miserable. Looks like I had a lot of fun. I, I must have been on an advanced scouting mission in the harbor. Yes, this looks pretty advanced, all right. For now, let's just move on. Yeah. I must have been in scouting. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. Kim, I'm gonna take a quick look inside. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot over here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. 
There's a framed photograph on the table. Take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man is young, dark-skinned, and dressed in a Royal Carabiner uniform. The girl is smiling playfully at the camera. The young man looks happy as well. He's about to smile right after this moment frozen in time. You're sure of that? Why did you take that? Something about this man piques my interest. I think this can be a side thing. I'm making an artistic photo collage, Kim. I'm a cop. It's instinctual to collect evidence. Fine, but let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around here. Let's go. We gotta find Ooh, some weird tearing there. I might need to turn on V-Sync for this game. Let's go look around for Everett Clare. Now, before it's too late. What's this here? A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Mush and Aret. Our fake crane stands tall, proud, erect, and still. Mush. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. I did that. I had the power to. Wow, Chad, I'm doing that. That's me. I'm using the power of my mind to move that. Oh, chat, by the way, a fun little detail in the game that I'm not sure they'll cover in the first episode. It's not spoilers or anything, but it's sort of funny. Whenever we're talking the shit in our head, we are just standing there. Everyone's just watching us. Just remember that. And with a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container. Everyone down. is just quietly observing as we sit there and drool. We are that fucked. This crane was built with a purpose. Like right now I'm just staring at the panel while Kim just looks at me. To move this container. What's inside the container? Who can say? All you know is, it's special. I can't see how that was worth the records. Except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. We leave. We're gonna go check it out now. I have a crowbar, I can open it. Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. <sighs> Is this like your thing with that wall again? Maybe. I, I can't tell. I think we should investigate further. You do? Because I don't. Why, why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? I, I don't know, Kim. It just feels special. It's a cargo container, detective. Just like all the others. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to get the body down from the tree. I'm gonna touch it. No reply. I'm gonna open it. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Nothing more to do. Yet. We'll be back. Come on, Kim. We'll be back. Oh, I came this way. We will be back. More money. <laughs> We're only $75 short for rent. The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. A pile of cargo belts. V-Sync, 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 V-Sync. Probably should turn on V-Sync right now. There's no V-Sync. There's... Chat. There's no... There's no V-Sync. This game doesn't actually have V-Sync. I've never seen a game not have V-Sync! <laughs> Maybe it's not a V-Sync problem at all, and that's why they don't need V-Sync. More money. More money! Making a lot of money off of this. Hey, container guy. No voice acting? Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. Container, oh. container, used to be Walt Pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everett. Tiny man is so engaged in his work, he doesn't notice you. 
Hi! Everett, Everett, Everett. He looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. I see you are not a human I feel like an mister. asshole. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? What is it with you people and scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. He waves at the containers towering behind him. What's going on? What's going on here? Looks at the mountain of containers rising behind him. Ooh, not gonna be a great one. We could ask him, though. Chat, provide me with your power! We need... Intellect boosted! We're very bad at intellect! We're not very smart! Give me your power! No! Damn it! Funny. Everything uh, is I so blame pretty you. and red. You and Leo look like brothers as you glance around with similar childlike wonder. Wow! Red is so much prettier than drab old green. Sure is, mister. Sure is. Really livens up the place. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I hate to break this bonding moment, but the red containers mean they are replacing the company livery with the union livery, which means this strike isn't going to stop anytime soon. Where is everyone? The harbor? I mean, I guess I already know it's a strike. Do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. Best I'm character Leonard, in the entire the way, game. Leonard Bellet. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douay Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Hold on, who's this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. Right, right. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. Right. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. No. Dr. Lemaitre said so, and she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. I think you're doing a great job around here, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. You don't think it was possible. You didn't think it was possible, but the smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot in Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. What's in the container over there? I point to the container suspended from the crane arm. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers. Bullshit, Leo! Who are you hiding in there? Did you do it? You the killer? Or are you hiding the killer in that box? I told you. I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers union. Oh, you want Mr. Everett then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs and continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Patience. Deep down you have the mental power to keep listening. Not many would, but you do. Do not interrupt Leonard. Had an arithmetics teacher, Miss Bellows. <laughs> Her real name was Miss Bellums. She was a real pretty lady. 
But when she got mad... <laughs> All the boys liked her, if you know what I mean, mister. We used to sneak in her yard in the dark and peek through the window. Okay, One Leo. Maybe I should have stopped, Leo. Fellow. Yes, we did. Yes, we did, mister. No, you fucking did. Yes, we did. We did, mister. Indeed, we did. Him was a big, big fellow. Used to drive the Troika near houses, school and everything. Then was all naked, too. That's all I got to say about that. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you for telling me the whole thing. Thank you. Eh, almost forgot. Mr. Everard is in that container over there. We got distracted telling the story, but he's in there. Thanks, Leo. I'm off. Bye, bye now. All right. Time to kill Mr. Uh, Everett in cold blood with this crowbar for the crime he committed. The horrible crime that he committed. Oh, yes. Time to murder him. Time to take his fucking life. He's going to die. Stair made of pallets leading up. I can't. Of course, you have to get up. There we go. Mr. Everett, I'd assume. Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He sip a typical Oops. power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you've got a backbone. Say nothing. Look him dead in the eye. The one good eye of this man fills you up without even flickering. The other, his lazy eye, is constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It is on, Chad, I gotta mute for a second. Back. in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Fine. It's just sometimes when I order uh, food, they will not leave. <laughs> and I have to tell them to leave the food at the door, despite that being the thing they should have been doing. Uh, for the last year or so, without any instruction, uh, from when you don't know where to look, it's hu unbearably humid in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Keep staring at him. At first, nothing happens. His face wears a wide and self-satisfied smile. Every now and then, he smacks his big lips. Like a general over his maps, he plots his moves. Judging by the way he's licking his chops, it's going to be a good one. So... Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi, how nice that you found a moment to pay a visit to the Debardes Union. I'm Everard Clare, head of this little operation here. Right. Please, have a seat. The folding chair looks like a torture device. Extremely uncomfortable. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. All right. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois. Let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions, one of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Yeah, they revoiced this guy. He used to be a little bit less nasally. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, Pretty sure. I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. What? Don't give up, but don't leave either. You're going to have this conversation on your terms. You just need to remain headstrong. Remain standing and don't go anywhere. Everard, 
starts whistling a little worker song. He really is trying to ignore you. Or will you out of existence. Uh, stand strong. The lieutenant stands right next to you, not showing any signs of impatience or boredom. I see you are an extremely stubborn man, Mr. Dubois. Shoot him. We don't have a gun that anymore, Chad. We lost that ages anything. ago. We never had it. You did it. This might help against whatever comes next. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. Mm -hmm. This should take care of that nonsense. What? He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically large. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could owe him for. This is a trap. Authority's right. You can take that comically large check and shove it up your ass, Everett! Keep it, I'm good. Okay, okay. I respect a man. Twenty-five dollars, huh? Wow, so generous of you. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is ah! swamped by a black <sighs> of fear. Only two words escape its gravitation. <sighs> lost and gun. How do you know about my lost gun? I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. <sighs> Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouth. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Plus one to my composure. At least I'm not sitting. Motorix chat. Please. Please. Motorix chat. Please chat. Motorix now. God, ah. you're sweating. Uh. Your knee is jerking. Ah. You're about to cry, <laughs> aren't you? You're about to cry because you cry. lost your gun oh, and fuck. those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. So what? Men can cry too? You want to cry? God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this, <laughs> Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. He's what killing me! Is he trying to pull here? <laughs> this guy's trying to kill me! Pull the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Harry Dubois! There are no Harrys! Let your mind go to your safe While place! While Everard is distracted by your odd behavior, the lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Would you like to know that, Everard? Some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion? Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. No! Mr. Dubois. I'm as good as it gets, Mr. Dubois. Vaguely gesture with your hands above your head. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was... I'm, I'm dying. We're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. 
Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer. Reaction speed's right. I gotta move. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Volition's questions right. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Could you help me... Get a dead body down from a tree. You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. Mm -hmm. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. You are a community leader. Help your community out. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Okay. Jean-Luc, the cop who bested you in physical combat is here. Oh, he, he knows! body in a tree problem. Namely, he needs it to be taken down. Yeah, that's right, you little bitch! Go get that body for me! That's what you get to do now, now that I own you! You can find Luke down at the gates, but you already knew that. Anyway, he's going to help you, now that he's back on his feet. What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what There's in all of them. There's something special about that container. It was attached to the Kvalsen crate. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. <sighs> Inland Empire has made this a situation, chat. This is normally not a situation your character cares about, but because of Inland Empire, Harry now gives a real big shit about this container, because his... Fucking Ty has yelled at him that there's something inside of it. So we're going down that rabbit hole. Smooth talking. Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. The container? He's right. Rhetoric might be onto something. I should go talk to the container. Let's talk about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Does this mean if I do things for you, I'll get my gun back? Hold on. Could he really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. I'll not be blackmailed with this gun business. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. True. Teenage guns with any luck, it's Kuno. I don't think that gun's Never loaded, but man, it would sure spook him. I assure you, we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate, if inevitable, and doesn't put the RCM in a good light. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun finding competition on our hands. Oh, we're racing to find a gun now. All right. You call me Mr. Dubois, why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard. I call you Harry. Harry Dubois. That's what the hang of the corpse called you. Harry. So that's really my name? My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? Chad, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I gotta go so bad.
Sorry, I had to grab my food from outside too before Bear stole it. I think the odds of that are very low. Mm, it's, uh... My memory is fine, I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity. This guy gives right me such now. weird vibes, dude. Asking too many questions will make you look weak. You should maybe focus on the folder. There's absolutely not a single fucking chance in a million years I'm gonna pass this drama check. We only get one attempt at it, so we can come back to it later. What kind of cop does it say I am? Harry, you're not simply a cop. You're a star. A bright shining star in the drab law enforcement sky. Outshining all other stars. Yo! You're a superstar. That's what I like about you, Everett. You get me. Of course I do, Harry. And I'm, I'm a superstar cop. He's I'm gonna fucking put you on right. Big stages. Your name in giant neon letters. Harry Dubois. The giant neon sign reading Harry Dubois hanging from the Kvalsun crane can be seen all the way to Jamrock. Somewhere in Mirova, a beautiful woman sees the bright glow on the horizon and says to herself, Oh my God, I shouldn't have left him. Let's get this straight. What is, what is my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. You feel like a... Dubois, but you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. You don't feel like any of these things. You know what your name is. You have a sophisticated name, like that of a count or a beautiful man. I feel like a Dubois, but not like a Harry. Something longer. Sure, okay. You're Harold. Harmon. Haroldimus? But that's not what the record says. The record says Harry Dubois, a real man's name. <sighs> Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. Do you know where I live? But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. Ah, Jesus. You're a Jamrock boy. Hey, a long thanks, way from home, but that's okay. from Gar, for the fucking raid, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. It's real nice of you. I'm playing the sorriest superstar cop ever. In Disco Elysium. Hope you had a good stream playing whatever it is you were playing. You know anything about my family? Do I have a wife or kids or... Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family oh. in here. Unless you oh. think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? Uh, you're right, I don't. That's why I like you, Harry. A good man knows both his strengths and his weaknesses, and you, my friend, you are one of the all-time greats. Where'd you get that folder, anyways? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Chat. Please continue, Harry. We need to boost my intellect now! I'm getting in that folder! Boost it! Boost it now! We're gonna do the drama roll. We need intellect boosted. I don't care what gets debuffed. We need intellect. This is our only chance. 42%! As you Home, baby! Folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. That's not an RCM folder. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi, from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? Mm. A pity. The mystery of you 
will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's he, move on. He really got angry about the folder thing. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here. And I would love to help you, like I'm helping you with the body and your lost gun. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Right. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. Kim, is that true? Are we door-opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing. Nah, that sounds about. extremely shady. Does this jiggling ooze think <laughs> he's going to use you? Get off. He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son. With your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up. And when he does, you're going to come out on top. Why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. He's right. You look like you could run around all day. I roundhouse kicked Measure Head like it was nothing. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just uh -huh. a weasel. A weasel Just lives a there. weasel lives Nothing there, huh? Nothing to worry about. What do you mean by weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. Just a loud when weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Right, right. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. I bet you don't even know anything about the thing. Harry, my dear friend. I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Damn it. Fine, I'll look into it. We need to talk about that murder. But also, if I look into this one thing, I might get closer to the gun. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. Uh -huh. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. All right, I'll see you later. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Um, thanks. I was wondering how I'm supposed to get out. Here, you're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Thanks. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Cool. So cool. Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights yeah. and they solve. Yeah, shit. that's me. I've been establishing my super stardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Salem Rocky Bae. Badass on the edge disco cop. Oh yeah. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. No, fuck you. <laughs> Action! And with a sudden flash, the world freezes around you. And you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. Some, what is this guy? What is this guy? Some kind of superstar cop? Temporary research bonuses. Minus two logic still seems unlikely. Research time, one hour and 10 minutes. 
All right. First, let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar in the groupies and cocaine riddled with hepatitis C strikes a lion lionesque pose with a mic kind of way. You're not a Guillaume de Million or Davy Dewis. No, you're a metaphorical superstar. You bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion to a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it. Where some would say it doesn't belong. Law enforcement. I am entering superstardom, because I do believe I am some kind of superstar. All right. This game is fucking amazing. This game is a masterpiece. I love this game. I played it. I played it through so many times, and I still feel like I see so many new things every time I play it. Like there's interactions in this one I've never seen. Why would you want to research it if it lowers logic? No, you misunderstand how it works. Uh, that debuff only exists while I'm researching it. Once I'm finished researching it, a debuff will switch to a buff. Most of the time. Sometimes it switches to a buff and debuff, but it doesn't give you a permanent debuff. All right, we gotta go tell Measurehead uh, that he's gotta get that body down for us now. Ooh, new gloves. This would swap our gloves from plus one interfacing to plus one half light. Ultra Series Gloves. Half Lights for Intimidation, we're gonna take that. We already have more points in that. Might as well double down to the things we're good at. Get back downstairs. Time to go tell Measurehead we did it. Well, time to go tell him to get the thing down for us. That's his job now. But first I'm gonna to talk to this box. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Ooh, not gonna be opening this. I, with a 3% chance with impossible 18, I can persuade the door to open. Chat, you'd wanna boost my intellect for this. We can try it. We'd wanna boost my intellect. I don't see it happening, but we can try. Maybe. The odds of it are incredibly low, and I don't really level rhetoric on a character with this build, so probably not. Was it the wrong thing? Better, it's still so low, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you boosted it, and it's still that low. Yikes, we didn't even change it. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? You boosted it, and it didn't change anything. Yeah. Why am I? Why are you what? Anything at all. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. We'll get this open one way or another. I don't care how long it takes. Let's get the fuck out of here. Come on, Kim. We'll be back. We'll be back for you. First, let me level up my health, because I feel like I'm in constant danger. Let's go get Measurehead to get that body down so we can figure out what the hell we're doing with it. The sun's starting to set. We're running out of time today. Gotta backtrack all the way back now. I'm not gonna be able to pay my rent, but then again, I'm a hobo cop. It doesn't matter where I live. That's the whole point of it. Are we useless? This is def- someone in chat, some- someone definitely just said, this is definitely a reload situation. Do not ever reload disco. I'm telling you that right now. You'll stop having fun if you reload disco. That, that goes against the entire point of the game, to the point where I don't even think it should have a quick save. You get to retry it. It's not like you can't do that roll again. You just have to level up rhetoric once. Hey, measure head. Remember me? Do not presume this has drastically altered our race dynamic. I knocked you out like a God of martial arts. True. I said nothing about our personal dynamic. That has altered a little. Good. He means very little. <laughs> Everett told me you can get the body down from the tree. So it was. You bested me in race combat to reach my superior. 
Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning, enemy. I will go and remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. Good! You're so noble, Measurehead. But while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. All right. That would mean you're openly showing the people that you're taking the Union's side. Lieutenant, what if we don't do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it down ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic Haplogu. Dude, I'm still sitting here as a ham sandwich, and I don't know exactly what the fuck he's talking about. All right, whatever, just go hey, do it. See that they stay here the whole time. I, I wouldn't mind being like a, you know, turkey club, though, meatball grinder. Something like that would be pretty cool. Just walk through a wall there. So how you been? The woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. So you guys are like cops or something? Yeah, we're the law around here. Cool. I like men with guns and power. Did she just say guns? Cocky, oh no. <laughs> I'm getting sweaty again. I just remembered some kid might be playing Russian roulette with my gun right now. And it's loaded. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Yeah, Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. I don't. I've seen enough of that dead body already. Look at you! RCM renter cops Guarding that bridge like Evrot's lapdogs! Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale! And who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? Yo. Yes, I am an unbelievably corrupt cop. I'm the most corrupt. I am corrupt every opportunity I get. I yell right behind him. Fuck all of you. The man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. God, he's so big. The corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. There was, there's been no side choosing. We did what we had to do to keep order. And what you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. I'm out of here, chat. Let's go investigate that body, now that it's down. Kind of take a look around. It is. Yeah, just getting pretty late, it's five. Sometimes it's hard to tell your character to go somewhere. There we go. No subscription, I don't think I'm a ham. Hang on. That felt good. Your heart's pounding nicely. Half like calm down. You should tell people to fuck off more often. No, you shouldn't. You're an officer of the law. Kim? I think I should tell people to fuck off more often. It felt really good. Not as a general rule, but that one was justified. Better to get the lay of the land before telling people to fuck off. That means you should do it whenever you feel like someone's disrespecting your authority. Fuck yeah, motherfuckers! That's the spirit. Yeah! Never forget, the whole world's a wooden house and you're a goddamn flamethrower. I'm a fucking cop. I'm a fucking cop. All right, let's get this body taken care of now. Oh, Jesus. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished 
pinewood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Beautiful. Wipe a tear from your eye. Mr. Measurehead has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. A field autopsy? Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. The fuck are they on about? The cop's gonna cut his shit up! Don't we have someone else for this? To cut his shit up? It's not about cutting. And no, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain, from autopsy to cleanup to social work. Wait, honorary rank? An honor and a burden attached to your rank once you've proven yourself able. Usually after five to eight years of field work. Mine is lieutenant detective. Yeah, I feel like a detective. You are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Now, the way I see it, it's either this or we complete the initial interviews. We already met Evrard, that only leaves the Wild Pines representative. There's one in town, negotiating the strike. She could have information. Now, let's do this now. We're already here. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony rooney. Never mind. Come back later. First, what out. exactly is a field Amusion. autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. Oh, I should put on my gloves. Let's get back to this later. I hope we do. I need to put on my real it's gloves. It's getting really... I brought gloves for this. It'll probably boost it. Yeah, interfacing. Yeah, let's put on my good gloves. All right. The rotting man. The lieutenant adjusts Instead of my fighting gloves. I don't think I have to wrestle this thing. Breath. Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. All right, let's get You've this started. It. There truly is a time for everything. Even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity let's get in there all right i'll ask you when i need you to for the most part maybe i should handle the contact and you take notes right right okay where should i take these notes in your paperwork officer just fill out the field autopsy form <sighs> you're not gonna believe this uh i think i've lost uh all my paperwork officer what haven't you lost i still have my disco trousers Yes, barely. Yeah. I can give you my paperwork. There's an autopsy form there. Several, actually. But only if it helps move things along. Um, Kim, I'm sorry I lost everything. Yes, well... It's okay to cry, Runkari. Let's just work off of yours for now. Right. The autopsy form is near the end. Open it up to... Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look at the... I'm gonna look at Kim's notes. You find a moment. As the lieutenant inspects the dead man's fingernails. Just a few glances. The pages are filled with a bulky freehand that's nearly illegible. Ah, uh, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for stuff about me. You're probably imagining it. The notes are very hard to decipher at a glance. So don't draw any conclusions from this. But... What? It's not a glowing review, ah! sorry to say. Ah! The 41st, as you're referred to comes across as somewhat less than competent. I mean, true. It's not explicitly stated that the lieutenant doesn't trust you. There's just nothing positive in there. True. That's not good. Trust among officers is extremely important. If you don't improve your rapport, there could be consequences down the line. Mm -mm. Try to understand what the lieutenant has written about the case at hand. It's very hard to draw conclusions. All you can make out is that he is in a hurry to solve the case. The tempo of the handwriting says as much, and that there are a lot of notes in there. Most of them are made prior to arriving at the scene in preparation. Oh, here it is. What? I open up the note. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It All begins right. with... Let's begin with assistant. That's you. Harry Dubois, Raphael Ambrosius Costo.
I'm a superstar disco cup. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... Coroner's case number. KK57. Write it down. 08. Next. Next name. N.A. Next. Date of birth. N.A. Age. Hmm. Roughly 50. Roughly 50. The corpse looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Teeming with opportunistic microorganisms, letting out a foul-smelling thiamine compound. Your eyes turn watery. Race. Mondial. Write it down. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Sex. Fucky, fucky. That's good shit, kid. You're fucking killing me over there. You got any other good ones? Mail. <laughs> Pigs could have sex. I write fucky, fucky. No, I'm gonna write mail. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51. Yes. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non-applicable. 10. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment. None. At least not after the initial examination. A strange word. Treatment. What exactly is treatment, anyway? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. How did you not know that? Aren't you a cop? You're leaving Fuck. a weak impression. Shady's there. right! Say something sure-handed. Authority's right! Don't overdo it. It's okay to be unsure. I agree. Hmm. Lividity pointed to a lynching. I'm not so sure. A silent nod. The lieutenant places his gloved hand on the corpse's chest, as if in preparation. We should start the post-mortem. Turn the page. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copier paper tries to answer why. Why? External examination summary. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. Oh, see, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something the thing. more lurid. Write it down. The boots are ceramic. Mm -hmm. Vitreous enamel. They are fused to his skin right, right, from blood right, flowing right, right. downward post-mortem. Removal of the boots is left for processing. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a national pattern. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. Mm -hmm. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings, to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene, using a triggered mini. The deceased has a cargo lashing belt around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, uh -huh. three meters. Uh -huh. Got it all there down. is a buckle on the other hand. Well nourished, uh -huh. athletically built, mm -hmm. measuring 1.8 meters. Right. Generally consistent with age, about okay. 50. Preservation is good. Okay. Ambient temperature. Yeah, I got it. I'm not writing any of this down. Yep, you got it. The spine is bent more than the lieutenant compensated for. No. Oh. This buster's actual height is about 1.85. And no, you could not take him straight on. I'm going to write 1.85 meters, lieutenant. Of course, I undercompensated. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Touch the corpse's hair before moving on like a weirdo. The hair under your latex fingers feels cold to touch. Stroke his Wait. hair. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair start sticking to the latex of the glove, like thread of a rag doll's head. Pet him More like hair a dog. Sticks to the glove. Hair off the rain-soaked head of a dead man. There are bumps and dips on the skull below. An alien landscape. There, there, dead man. You were someone's child. 
It's all over now. There, there, baby. <laughs> it's okay to be dead. The lieutenant watches you in silence. Write it down. Short, light brown male pattern bolts. That was some sick shit, Sekopa. <coughs> Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stone mm -hmm. strong. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. Kuno, shut the hell up! In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest. Consistent with predation. Write down, but I'm meant for high Kuno velocity. No, I'm gonna write it down. You get your mark. Uh, the lieutenant produces a small folding knife with the uh, other hand pulling on the belt. He starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. Steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You've got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Oh yeah. I'm prepared. Pet the chain cutters. The hanged man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Pull them Always out. Always good to think ahead. Now, we need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully. With as much... Ooh, I'm not good at precision, dude. That's one of my weak spots. See? My pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. You pig. Ooh, boys. actually, I've got a pretty fuck. good chance. 83% chance. Uh, look for a good spot to cut first. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck. Swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the east. First of all, I'm not your pig, Kuno. You are? You're Kuno's pig? Concentrate on the belt, not on who is whose pig. There is no pig. There are only the chain cutters and the belt. I'm gonna cut it. After nice. some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together. Sweat forming on your brow. The amount of 90% I failed in this game leads me to believe that nothing is a guarantee. Snap. Just for the record. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck right. and the dark red ligature mark around it. All right. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. As it ought to. This is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest, pulling up. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Uh -huh. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia... Oh boy! No! <laughs> Let's get up and see! Any day now, I'm gonna have to start leaving this thing on all the time. Just getting in there preemptively on that one, chat. I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Does it look like he was enjoying his moment of death? Ah, yes, your hunch before. We can have a semen analysis requested from processing, if that's what you meant. No, I was trying to get a psychic read, honest. <laughs> Honestly, I was going for more of a psychic thing, Kim. No, you weren't, officer. That would be preposterous. Just write down that we request a semen, vaginal, and anal fluids analysis. The corpse with his pants down does not have an opinion on the subject. All he has is genitals and a deathly odor. Well, if Kim says it's good, it's good. I'm not gonna fucking get down there myself. I'm not gonna get in there. Write it down, add semen sample. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. All right. Bullets have bitten little pieces out of him. It must have been excruciating, especially the hip. Before you is a temple of pain, that new little tenderness in life. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. This is the body of a soldier, a mercenary. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here. Of battles, wars, right last item, hands. 
Pick up the hand. His flesh is cold. Icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from? And what's your name? My name I'm is... only fucking with you. Oh. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Kobo. What can I do for you, Il Kobo di Cappadocia? Pleasure's all mine. Tell me, were you a temple of pain and a stranger to tenderness? You get me, Kobo. I feel like you were once for tenderness and kisses yourself. But then shit went south. And now, you're ahead of even me on the pain front. We should do this more often. Be close like this. I mean... Hands are clean. No sign ah! of injury. <gasps> My brain! I'm having some kind of breakthrough, man. Superstardom is at, is in my reach. Were we expecting I it? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Working so close to the fumes coming from the corpse must be hard. You realize suddenly that the lieutenant has been barely keeping it together, these past two items. Write it down. Ooh. All right. That's in all for the external. Well done. What next? That would be internal examination. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? You don't even have a joke. Ooh, nope. Moving on. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hiery bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. Yeah, jack that fucker off! And it's going back on. <laughs> the hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. I was gonna go ahead and leave it on for the rest of this. I guess these little shits are gonna ruin everything. Write it down. Respiratory system. Back hunched, as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaw. He stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. He's really doing it. The dead man's teeth cut into his gloved hands. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Mm -hmm. Hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and mouth. All right, all right. From here, it looks as though the clown faced man is screaming. The tendons of his jaw are torn apart. Hyoid, ripped from the force of the lieutenant's hands. Look inside the dead man's mouth. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again straight in that mouth of his. No, you don't. You can keep it in. You can keep anything in. Look deeper inside. You manage to suppress the contractions trying to enter your stomach. All it takes is concentration. Through it, you see nothing but darkness. More meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. All right, all right. Write it down. Hepatobiliary. N.A. Why don't we have anything? Ah. Are you a hepatobiliary expert? I don't think so. Neither am I. And that's it? That's it. All right. Same for toxicology and serology. Both? And unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there? The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could do. We already have one test as per regulation, and we already requested semen. Pigs requested semen like it's no big deal. I'm not even interested in these boring milk cuts anymore. I haven't sucked him off for anything. Uh, better leave it at that. More important. Leave it NA, then. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Write it down. Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground, to the pool of feces there. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. 
Write it down, omit the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries, summary. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one, too. What's the fourth injury field for? Nothing. Just in case. Okay, bite marks. Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. Write it down. And your opinion, officer? Of the bite marks, non-fatal. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. A stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. The perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. Okay. At maximum velocity, Foco! Maximum velocity, Kuno! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant's admission has caused great gratitude in Kuno. He is silent with it. Write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury. Two boxes. Non-fatal post-mortem. Right. Next. Step three, ligature marks. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical colon intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Mm -hmm. What was that about no chlorine around the neck? You'd be chlorine for your life. This is the shit in this game I fucking love. Cause I like, though I know the story of this game, I've beaten it many times. The fact that you from a first playthrough can get shit like this is so much, is so fucking interesting in this game. Non-fatal post-mortem. Hmm. He is deep in thought eyes fixed on the bright red ring around the dead man's neck. I think my Twitch chat is broken. Hang on, let me reload. Dead. Oh my God. Okay. Let's take off emote again. Why do you say that? I'm serious. I don't think it was this injury that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was Fato? I arrived at this conclusion through psychic arts. Why didn't he claw at his neck when they hanged him? And why did they not tie his hands? A big man like this is dangerous. Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrists. That part got blurry for me. The stench. But you are right. There should be signs of struggle. Let's leave the cause of death empty for the time being. Mm -hmm. Let's wrap this up. I pronounced this field autopsy over. Nice. How'd it go? It was a, an irregular field autopsy. Hang on. We did not establish cause of death, which oh, is yeah. supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. All right, all right. We requested a test to be run on the genitals. That was the règle. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks if we are lucky. I will not hold my breath. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries too. We describe them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. All right, all right. Oh yeah, well done, master detective. Maybe a drink is in order. Quiet electrochemistry, not now. What now? Now? Now we put him in a body bag and I drive him to Forborg for processing. Huh? The lieutenant looks at the dead man one more time, then at his notebook, then at the corpse again. He's thinking, did I miss something? Huh. We have a zero fucking chance to search the body to find the real answer. Even if I boosted my perception with skill points, of which I believe I have two, and then had you guys vote for it, there's absolutely no fucking way. I'd rather save those points for more meaningful roles. Now, I will let you guys vote for, uh... Boosting my Motorix. You'd want to boost Motorix right now to try this, but the odds of it are basically zero. It might go up to like 30%. But if you boost Motorix, maybe we have a small chance. It's a legendary roll. 
You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. I'm not going to look in his pants again. <laughs> I'll look under his fingernails like Kim already did. His fingernails have turned dark. They're chipped and quite long. There is dirt under them. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. I've got a gut feeling there's more to this corpse. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And we need to do it fast. Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? It would have to be industrial in size. Let's start by asking Gart at the Whirling in Rags and the Frit store down at the gates. If they don't know, but only if Kuno else fails. Fuck are you looking at Beano, man? You want a piece of the Kuno? Wanna get fucked? Only if all else fails. All right, let's go. Mm -hmm. This is one task we cannot sideline. With every hour, whatever yeah, we are looking time. for will become harder to find. But first, some kind of superstar. So, but first, something more important. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants their state monopoly on violence to be mixed with celebrity worship. They claim to know it would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. It would be insane, they say. To all this, you say, fuck off and die, in a cool voice. You people have no idea how good these cops are gonna get. They're gonna crack 20 cases a day. In the future, cops will be like astrophysicists or prime ministers. Or profits. And you're the first one. Superstar cop. So yeah, we lose minus one logic forever. But we gain a learning cap boost for everything else. Which is pretty good. Why is my, uh, why is my camera off-center? I believe my camera might be a little bit bugged. Let's go inside the building and ask uh, Gart about a freezer. Logic can fuck off and die! Exactly. Chad, exactly. This game is pretty cool. This game is pretty cool. This game's awesome. And it's on sale on Steam. Oh, hey. It's all about the money, you know. Can I help you? I seem to be in need of a fridge. Yes, yes. For the dead body. You want to put a dead corpse into my fridge, right? Yeah! The flattery is the way. Yeah, we heard you have, like, a huge fridge. Colossal. Practically a mausoleum. You've heard wrong. And you're not putting a dead body into my fridge. Damn. I thought the size thing would work. Why? Because this is a culinary <laughs> establishment, but why? not a morgue. I can't believe you even asked me. It would only be for a... Lieutenant, you too? You're asking too? No, the answer is no. I will not turn this place into some kind of macabre circus. Wow. Turn the lieutenant off like he was a busted old radio. He really is the lord of his realm. <sighs> Let's go talk to the Frit clerk. All right. All right, you're right. So I talked to Sylvie for you, Gart. God. Wink. Oh, but he should be. Lay it on him. <laughs> oh my God. But I don't want to lay that on him. Of course you do. This was your plan all along. This is how you fix it for them by answering the woman question um i don't like this there doesn't seem to be another way turns out she's a whore who likes to ride the cock carousel gart wonderful <laughs> it is it's wonderful what what does that mean cock carousel Just drill the inside. <laughs> no. 
No time for lectures, son. The point is, you're losing at her nasty mind games. Sylvie's a total psycho. God, does it mean you talk to her? What else did she say about me? What else do you need? You don't want to- Yeah, she said that she likes the cock carousel very much. So fun to pick a carousel of cocks going merrily around. He looks at you, spinning your arms, then leans on the corner and sighs. His head drops between the shoulders, heavy and defeated. She broke the bird, you know, the great skewer. I found it on the ground with a broken wing on the morning she left. I should have known. It was her way of telling me to piss off. I should stuff it up my ass. Dude, I'm a hero. Yes, the bird is connected to this. It's a symbol of hope, and she broke it. Yeah, man. Signals. Mix signals. This is classic cock carousel behavior. Broken bird, feathers, nod knowingly. This is all part of the mindfuck on the cock carousel. <laughs> cock carousel. I think I understand now. That's what they ride until like... Right, right. 39. Right. They ride the cock carousel until the clock runs out. Here, have the rest. Thanks. Now, let me have a drink and think about this shit for a moment. My and there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? Another situation fixed by Dr. Love. Empathy, I don't feel too good, Empathy. This quest you gave me, Empathy. But whatever. I have to reload the game because the camera's all fucked and for some reason not centered. Well, well, we got the booze and he didn't give us the fucking fridge. So technically now we're even. We have some more rooms to explore, though. We still have some time. I'd like to explore some more of the map before we uh, go talk to the girl for the fridge. There's another store to go in. Dr. Love. Good shit, Dr. Love. One of the best. Did he sing karaoke yet? To my knowledge, you cannot do it on the first day, so it won't be. That's like a day three thing. It's pretty, that's somewhat deep in the game. And rightly so. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. I am the law. I know, sir. Yes, people get that you are the law. You really don't have to keep saying it. What? Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, uh. postcards, and some board games. Uh. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. Oh, encyclopedia brain leaking. It's so confused. What's a board game? Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. What's a postcard? A postcard is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. She is unfazed by your questions. She would consider it impolite to point out any perceived weirdness. What is a book? That is a book. They have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. All right. My pleasure. Anything else you'd no. like to know? I'm going in. Cover me, chat. I like how there's a tip right here. Don't be afraid to say weird things. People are more forgiving to persons of power, like police officers. Exactly right. I can do whatever the fuck I want, whenever I want. I'm going in this back room. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking- I'm not even gonna talk to the lady at the front. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Pull open the curtains. Hang on. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Uh-huh. Why are you browsing the book? Uh-huh. Don't you feel compelled to look at the book? Mm hmm You ought to. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Pull open the curtains. 
right Just now. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. I am the... Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. But I sense this place calling to me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My God, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Ma'am. Just step away, dear sir. I am the law. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. How do you know? I am sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The powers? That's all the reason I need. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'm opening no. the door. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through. Shut so up! Decide Lies. Rip them open, we say. Rip them open! There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. You see a tattered set of curtains and a polyhedron-shaped cage-like trinket. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Rip it open. I'm in. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets, your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you're unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Shut up. I'm going in with my fight gloves and my flashlight. Let's take a look around, Chet. Let's take a look around. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. No sane person would ever put their head in such a machine. What is this? A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. And a merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. My God. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. What if you just break it down? Maybe I should break it down, but not before I strategize. That's right. Take in your surroundings. You need to have a solid ground and a proper posture if you want to succeed. First, check my posture. Steady breathing. Solid core. You've got this. With one shoulder forward, you're ready to smash into the door like a battering ram. Check your surroundings. The room is dimly lit and littered with old barbershop rubbish but the path to the door is clear. And what about the door? It's made of a solid block of wood, but it has stood there for ages. The hinges are old and coated with a carmine layer of rust. It should be doable. Knock on the door. Only an echo. No one is there. Help me out, chat. I need physique now. Unless you want me to look like a chump. I need physique right now, I'm gonna look like a chump. Oh yeah, it's time. <laughs> With the power of our minds combined! Ow, 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 ow. You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the door frame. Ow. It's going to take one more try to break through to the other side. But you've done it. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? <sighs> Freeze, dirtbags! <laughs> Hands up now! Fuck the system! I'm going in! Fuck everything! I'm in. Hobo cop. I'm in. Kim's got something to say. 
What is this place? Oh my god, it's another world. Beyond the veil. No, it's a gym. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. Kim, what if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yes, because it's closed. Now let's move on, shall we? Kim, that makes a lot of sense and that pisses me off. Sand is dripping from the punch bag. Over here we have a ball. Shot put ball. Posters. Worn out wall bars, they look unsafe, and a dumb bell. A barbell bar lies bell. on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of oh, beast yeah. it's dealing with. Oh, yeah. Look, there are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? Maybe it's familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Look, Kim, it's a trap. There's no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weights may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. I'm lifting it. Ow! Okay. Never mind. You managed to hoist it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick with sweat. Turns out you're no beast. Just an old man with bad form. Whatever. Weightlifting is for intellectually impaired anyways. It was never my favorite either. At the station gym, I mean. I prefer running. It clears your head. I leave. Me no need that. Me have stick. Kuno could lift that. Uh-huh. Keep looking around. The hallway's blocked with old window panes and debris. Anything else, bird? Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Poor animals, no rest for their bodies after death. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Mannequins, ghosts, airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Weird stuff going on. A naked mannequin torso. A strange yellow color. Blue velvet, soft to the touch. Moth bitten. Some money. I need money to pay my rent. More money. I need that to pay my rent. More money. Sorry. Production schedule filament memory. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. This is that place that we called that answered with that weird robot voice. That woman. That I can only assume was a recording. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins, with organs shining under their skin. Oh, it's all nerd stuff for welkins, gamers, which I am not. from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin, this is important. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. Oh my god, I'm gonna the be sick! Says, 
All non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men. All of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. One of them is a Welkin supremacist! Mm-hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. I would spend so much time on this. Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Looks at camera. Everyone looks at camera. Then looks back. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? Oh. We're gonna move on. That's a whole lot. There, there's a there's a lot of stuff here. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. Mm. A diagram for summoning some time forgotten being. The warp the stone. The seem very esoteric. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9, some written notes too, sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical here. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled the Game Master Frequency. Huh? A note says. This one can listen in on any station it wants. Looks like a surveillance program. Wait, who's the game master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like all of this is gone, left unrealized. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. They were gamers! No one has used the fireplace in ages. What's this here? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Radio computer? Just sitting here without anyone inside. But we are looking for a fridge, and we are pressed for time, so... On the other hand, it's not that I'm not interested in abandoned radio computers. Do you think I should turn it on? Maybe the body has stopped decomposing somehow. I don't know. You're in charge of this True, true, of true, it. true, true. Is the lieutenant a little scared? Just now, when he looked around... I'm gonna turn it on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Ah, uh, look inside the compartment! It's empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Insert the production schedule. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no. It was already glowing and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien CO-like technology. The static gets louder slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out crackling and old cutting into the air good afternoon fortress accident on rue de sangueslaine this Hello? is east in Flindian repeat station huh? please repeat is this the production schedule what's the production schedule the filament you have inserted into the reader Oh, you mean that glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Uh, yeah. Good. Please repeat the password. 
You should ask her for a hint. Uh, I'm, pa I'm really bad at passwords, Granny. Can you give me a hint? No. Is it my birthday? Uh, no. This is the police. Open it now. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trash accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. She's I'm afraid good. we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? I don't know the password, all right? Received. I will register. No, 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 you don't need to tell them I was trying to get in. That sounds bad. A login attempt. No, 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 then they're going to change it. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Wink, wink. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Uh, that's all for now. Thank you and goodbye. Bye, Granny. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Press print. Nothing happens. Leave. We'll have to come back one day. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Right. Right, right, right. Man, this game is enrapturing. This game's incredible, and the writing really brings it all together in such a fucking, like, hypnotizing way. I would consider this game hypnotizing. It's got a way of just la like, just, it's just awesome. Money, money, and big bear. Huh? You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. This ice bear is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. What is this thing? Looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim, it's a fridge. Of course, just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. Let's take a look inside. Look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Kim, this fridge looks perfect for the corpse. We don't have to ask around anymore. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is big enough and cold enough too. But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be as silent as we can. <laughs> yeah, we just moved that body into the big abandoned bear fridge. Shall we go and get the body then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. The two of you, easily. Let's get to it. The body is heavier than you expected and stinkier. <clears throat> it takes half an hour to get it down to the basement. Then, 10 more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Beautiful, a dead body in a nice bare fridge. This is some of the best police work I've ever done. You've definitely earned a drink after this. Perhaps even some pagan rites. Really? We need to celebrate by performing pagan rites, Kim. Let's bring out the mead and set it on fire. I knew you would say that. I knew this would lead to drinking. No, no more. This is paganistic enough, and he does not leave this room. He means it. He doesn't want to be the ice bear cop. Oh, well, this isn't police work, Kim, you're right. This is art. We're artists. And this was our vision. If I were an artist, this would certainly not be my vision. I would be much, much more conservative in my work. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Without Kuno, he means. Inside the icy realm 
of the ice beer fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Okay, we will be back in a moment, body. I'm gonna put on my investigating gloves. We're gonna need to go into this as hard as possible. The bear's eyes are still This is a white check. Red. And I am sitting on the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly. Two skill points. So chat, I'm going to save your boost for the second try and third try, not the first try. Oh wait, tell me something, dead man. Shoot, Looney Rooney. At the autopsy, you said you had ancient mysteries. Oh yes, Kobo Milobo, in the gift horse's mouth. Tracts and wakes and waterways. Ancient materials buried. Yeah, but to where, brother? Just a small gulp away. His mouth. My beloved Kobo. A small gulp away. How do you like it in the fridge? I like it a lot, brother. This really is your finest hour. You're a genius. A regular Coppolangelo. Thank you. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dream. We got a plus one because we talked to him again. Alright, I'm gonna try it once without doing anything, then I'm gonna boost my skills with you guys also giving me a boost. Your we got it, baby! And your eyes close. As if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh. First with your fingertips. It's right under the palm of your hand. What is this? His face. His cheeks. His nose. His fat, swollen lips. Ugh. Like a rubber spider, your gloved hand crawls on his features. Everything is silent. All around. Crawl up his nostrils. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Push your fingers in his nose. Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. The thing you're looking for, it's not there. Crawl out, spider. Put your fingers in his mouth. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around. Are you guys glad I put on my gloves? You're on the right track. Play with it. This feels right. Uh, open your eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from his throat. And there, in the back, of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula. What is this? Right in the soft palate. You see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, uh. almost vanished. Huh? No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Touch it with your finger gently. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Put your fingers in Your it. index fits Right in there, a tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth, right into his brainstem. Brainstem? Yes, that's what this part is called. You've seen the drawings. You've studied them. Feel around. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. The funk soul brother at the back of his head has gone dark forever. No! His funk soul brother's gone! Your yellow fingers slide into the remains of the limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. The onulations of the limbic system have ended. All is quiet. There's a cavity cut right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, 
but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. All the muscles in your body harden. Time to enter him. Bonk! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch a hole through his mouth. The cartilage gives in with a crack, like some fruit. Just like that, your hand is in his head. Strange fluid streams down your wrist. <clears throat> and then you feel it with the tip of your finger. Ice cold serrated metal. Its edges cut right through the latex and into your finger. The pain is barely noticeable under the adrenaline rush. I feel a solid object right under the skull. Can you, can you get to it? There's a tiny crack, a protrusion in the cranium, right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it from the inside. The object that is in there stops just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a very small exit wound here. This is a red check. Chat, usually it wouldn't boost for this. Boost my motorix, baby. Let's get this thing done right the first time. I don't want to fucking miss this. Let's get this thing out of this head now. Motorix boosting to maximum power. How did you boost, Chad? If you didn't boost motorix, why'd you boost? <laughs> my intellect? Are you stupid? Are you dumb? Why? I didn't need you anyways. Why are you so stupid? You pick the object between your index and middle finger. Feels sharp, like metal. You press your teeth together. Your jaw is clenched. All you need to do is just... I got it. Good, good. Slowly pull your fingers out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth. The garden glove is covered in blood right up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower. A blossom made of lead. A bullet. Drop it in. Excellent detective work the by me. Falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and a non calibre rifle. Some kind of brittle alloy. Fractured on impact. Keep it, Lieutenant. No, no, you deserve it. We can log it later. Alright. Looks like we need to add one more item to your injury list. Injury number four. All valentry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth, high velocity. Oh my God! It was Kuno. Tissue, it was Kuno all mouth. along. Kuno velocity. How does that sound? Oh shit, chat. Say nothing, just nod. Opinion, fatal injury. God damn right, it was his fucking fatal injury. And one last thing, we can now fill in injury number three, ligament mark. Opinion, non-fatal, post mortem. Treatment. The ligament mark, the fractured thyroid bone, it was all treatment. Yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was right. already dead. Right. Dead. Daba doop doop. Dead, 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 dead. Dead, dead, deader than dirt. Agreed. I have had my doubts for a while now, since I saw there were no signs of struggle on his hands and no claw marks on his neck. All right. There have been other signs too, small things. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, as the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for them. We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. I think I need to wash off. Oh, you really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the whirling in rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it. In the Maybe evening. the bullet holds more answers. Yes. We should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. Why would anyone do this? To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? Who would do this? That's for us to find out. I guess but you're this right. 
It will make okay. finding them just a little easier. What happens next? We put him in a bag and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. The body bag should contain the odor for the duration of the transport. All right. I would drive him to processing, but it's too late to do that today. I'll do it first thing tomorrow. No problem. One more thing. This was really good work, Detective. Damn right it was, because I'm a superstar cop, baby. Superstar hobo cop. The word lingers in the air of the basement. Far away, ice cream makers are buzzing, and the sea wind blows outside. Detective. That's a double morale boost. Let's drag him. First, I'm going to take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. You think they tried to sell ice cream from this hypercarnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. He points to the red snaky cable running from the fridge. The electricity bill must be catastrophic. On the other hand, it did help us with a certain corpse situation. Lucky us. Lucky, lucky, lucky us. Let's take him to the Kanima. All right. I will need a little help carrying him. Yeah. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. Bag it and ship it. Let's get out of here, chat. I don't remember every line having a voiceover. This update came out today. It voices the entire game down to the narration. Only a couple of stray lines are not voiced. And they're very few. I should take my flashlight off now. There we go. All right. Yes? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. See, I'm done here. So what's next on our list of things we have to do? We need to wash off our death smell, and then we need to interview the Wild Pines rep. And it's starting to get pretty late. I'm not sure we're gonna have time to do the interview. And wash my disgusting body off. And smokes. Gotta remember to get smokes. Hobo cop needs no washing. Fuck, you're right. You are right. Yes? Tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Uh... We're from different precincts. Why are we on the same case? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a... a pissing competition. What? His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. What do you mean? You don't know? I don't I remember any- you were in on it. I don't remember being in on anything. That's good. You know what I am in on. Retrograde amnesia. Better still than an imbecilic cop-off. Cop-off? It's just stupidity. What kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine. As if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. Ah, right. So this is a struggle over who runs Martin A. Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite a brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. So he volunteered to represent the 57th, but not out of competitiveness. On the contrary. I wonder what this says about me that I was sent by my station. Hmm. I was sent to teach you a lesson in style, boy. And I'd say so far I have. There can only be one conclusion. I'm the finest we have. A hero cop sent to outperform you in every way imaginable. I must be an augury, an, op an apocalyptic omen sent by my people. Can you guess my message? Don't be scared, but I think I might have supernatural abilities. I probably have an unbelievable kill count. He opens one hand and looks at it. 
A moment passes. Which school do you subscribe to? Mambo or Jambo? I'd like to think I have both Mambo and Jambo. I imagine strange things and get cold chills, too. I didn't know that was even possible. It must be a great burden. It's both a burden and a gift. It's good to have uh, an ambidextrous paradetective in a labor dispute. I can see why they sent you. Should we go? So you volunteered to spoil the, the cop off? Yes. I'm an unrepentant spoil sport. <laughs> Okay, enough of the competition then. Let's let's get to yes, something else. It's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. He's actually glad it's addressed now. Yeah, we're not gonna be figuring out that formidable. Let's move on. Oh, there's a bunch of new people here. I don't have any music to sing, unfortunately. And it's almost it's almost 8 p.m. Yes, I should go talk to the representative. My last interview I need to do. Kim is cool. Kim's like my favorite character. You really grow on him, too. He's like, he's great in this. The two of the, these two have like an awesome fucking dynamic in the story. It's awesome. They end up like really bouncing off each other and shit. It's, it's great if you, if you have like the right character to mesh with them. Let's go talk to the uh, representative from that other company for the other interview we have to do. Oh, down here. First, let me grab these boxes. Eh. Shadows on the water, green plants under the calm surface. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good evening, officers. I'm Joyce. Right, right. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Joyce L., what does the L stand for? Beaten, my maiden name. All right, uh, what gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. What is implied here? That you're a drunk? What? <laughs> About to send her to the fucking shadow room. <laughs> I'm not a drunk, ma'am. I'm a police officer. Of course you're not. It was only a joke. The correct thing to fucking say. Chat, we've enabled danger mode. I've gone above four points. My new fucking authority total is now 10. I have entered the fucking danger zone. Get ready for some wacky shit. I'm not gonna shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. She is unfazed by your rudeness, probably chucking it up to local custom. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an trying to look cool. unusual medical Come on. Issue. Very unusual. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. The lieutenant is hatching some scheme. Ooh. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation, and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. You seem rich. Can I have some money? Is what you want to say, but it isn't that easy, is it? Ah, oh, you're right, Inland Empire. It's not that obvious. What is this? An athletic challenge? Scream it from the top of your lungs immediately. Show that asshole. You seem rich! Can I have some money? You're thinking it, but your lips are not moving. What? Why not? Look at that lady. Oh. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. What nice fabrics. Why, yes. Tucked away under that sturdy green raincoat, almost rustic in its simplicity. A silk shirt and matching scarf 
around her gentle throat, while dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. She is rich. Now look at you. Fuck. You misery-clad simian. Oh, no. Barely able to tie your own laces. Oh, no. Your armpits are lakes. Oh, no. A scythe of booze proceeds you. Oh, no. Your hair sticks to your forehead, uh. and your underwear feels uncomfortable. Uh. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too... Ashamed? I'm not ashamed. What is this feeling? I've never felt it before. I'm a goddamn working man. I'm not ashamed to shake this leech for some dough. You think your little communism protects you from this feeling? No. The more demeaning it is to grovel at her feet. Oh God, the lieutenant is here too. Do not dishonor the force. Shut up, authority. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have leveled you. As I was saying, if there's any way yeah, yeah. As I was saying, can I have some money? Please don't. Voila, you're doing it. <laughs> you got any money? I have to pay for. I'm gonna be living on the streets tonight. Really, put your back into it. Yell it from the top of your lungs. Money! <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. The wind is a bit strong. I need that? money. How much money? One hundred real! That's a good sum. Not too small. Not fantastically large. She removes a few notes and hands Simple as that, baby. The paper is cold. That's how you get the money to live. Thanks, Granny. Don't want to go too high. She wouldn't pay it. Don't want to go too low with a laugh. Chad, I had to fight with Inland Empire to get this. <laughs> I had to fight with my stats to get this money. Normally they wouldn't fight you this hard on it. Whoa, whoa. Did you see how easy that was? Ask her for more. Toot toot, train to money town. Nay, twould be dishonorable and mine. Honor is my life. Can you eat honor? Are you an honorable? Give me a break. So, I hope I didn't just bribe you, officer. It may not be technically illegal under the Emergency Act, but still. I'm still getting my head around this whole money concept. You were just helping me You're out. You're right, man. That donations are permitted under the Emergency Act. And seemingly as it may be, as long as they're properly loaded. Oh my god, that's sad. Shut up, Chad! I'm the sorriest cop in Revachal! Which he most certainly will do. Now, how else can I help the RCM today, besides supplementing its salaries? Do you know something about these tattoos? That's the man who was killed. She I'm almost takes a this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. Mm, so you know something about the tattoos? Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I She's can She's hiding you with. something, Judd. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. She's hiding something. What can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have him. Oh, names! Mm. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41, Detective Dubois. I'm afraid Harry doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope my. Or badge! Oh. And what happened to yours, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. Remember when my partner told you I recently suffered from an unusual medical episode? My lost badge is related to that. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world, the city, nothing. Oh dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. 
but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. How do I negotiate my way out of this suggestion? She's a negotiator. Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. Surely there's some other way to demonstrate our law enforcement credentials. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Like what? Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or you can recover your badge. Though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before... Excuse us a moment, ma'am. Hey. Psst. Huh? Who's that? Who? Me? Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. Yo, is it finally time? Again? Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You've built it before. They've built it before. Hasn't really worked out yet. But neither has love. Should we just stop building love, too? Love has worked out really well for me. I'm a love winner. Good. We need tender men like you building gargantuan communism. Word on the street is it's going to be 10,000 times larger than any communism previously attempted by some, human beings. Some kind of big communism right? builder. How come there's word on the street? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie. Yes. Eat the rich. Yes. Sodomize the landowners. Yes. Impel all people who have more than 25 real. Yes. Pocket. Literally murder all human beings, regardless of their political beliefs. Yes. Literally murder anyone with political alignments. That does sound like me. Funky style. Very funky. Oh my god. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Wait, first, what's this communism even about? Failure. It's about failure. I don't do failure. Of course you do. You are failure. Oh. You are communism. Oh. Absolutely vanquished, beaten, curb stomped, shat on. While everyone else is out partying, Having a callous laugh, you will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world. You alone, against every living thing, against Radical every centrist. human alive. 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well-organized ruling class. Towering city blocks of bankmen who have the ears of prime ministers. Million-headed armies of nations and the love of your own mother. You against the atom, the charm and the spin, where the whole world failed. Matter failed to bend to human will. Human will fail to get out of bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are the last communist. The last communist. Now get to work, comrade. Roll up your sleeves and start building communism again! Oh, yeah. Get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Wait, what? Firing squads? You didn't say anything about firing squads. Too late to back out now. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few million eggs. Uh, roll up your sleeves up further and breathe in the pristine air. People think communism was some crazy idea that had its comeuppance 40 years ago. A fever that shook the world, never to return again. They were right until he woke up one day. Today, a spiritual corpse responsive only to the call of Commodore Red, prostitutes, and Krasmazov. For him, communism is still a thing. 
He will single-handedly raise the commune of O2 from the oceanic trench where it's been resting, covered in ghosts and seaweed. He is the big communism builder. Come witness his attempt to rebuild communism in the year 51. It's already internalized. Oh wait, I don't have the slots for it. I have to unlock one with a skill point. We cannot subscribe to communism just yet. It's not, it's time. This is not going quite as I hoped it would, detective. How did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance. And you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. Oh, so we're henchmen now. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. Shit! He doesn't let it show, but there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. I'm sorry for putting us in this situation. I'll handle it. I'm sure you will, detective. We could also just, you know, find my badge. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large, and your It's a good thing I have the brain of a person who's beaten this game four times. You could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. So, you propose we just don't investigate the drug trafficking? No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. Right, right. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done and demand for her information on the lynch. That sounds like a good idea, Kim. Hey, lady. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? You seem smart. I need someone to give me a lowdown on this reality we're in. This reality? That's related to my medical episode. I have troubling. I have trouble remembering the most basic terms of reality. Ah, yes. The episode yeah sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy now that i think of it making up words i respect that don't be faith madame he functions perfectly well he only needs a low down on all of reality we may be here a while then oh here we go reality I'm lowdown sorry, it's officer. time i'll help however i can all right you're in begin with the first one you'll appear worldly where are we we're in Martinez, baby. Baby? A casual term of endearment popular among the 50 plus crowd. It's a disco holdover, pay it no heed. I'm a disco holdover myself. <laughs> Aren't we all? Mm, what's this Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachol. A very small district tucked away near the industrial harbor, north of the 881 and Jamrock. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. Mm -hmm. It has its charms, just not this time of year. Okay, that's Martinez. What's Revachol? Revachol? Revachol is what you call a city. What kind of a city is Revachol? A great kind. Right. As if it's self-explanatory. Beyond patriotism. A fact. Damn right, brother! What makes Revachol great? History, detective. They built this city to resolve history. Our part in it, at least. Our centuries. And why will it resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will And what you would call a communist the builder? The are highest. The fault lines deepest. By that I mean... And a hobo conflicts. superstar? Ideological conflicts. My the shit is of men. compressed to the point of a neutron star as well. We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people in the middle of the Insulindic Ocean, right, right. the world's connective tissue. It's where the money is. So we're in an unimportant part of an important place. I think it's fair to say so. Martinez is about 22 kilometers from the center of the world. That soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are Insiacom. Coalition government, Insulindian Mission Command. Look to the sea. Silence. She lowers her hand. The water, the light. 
It's as though you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition, only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. Say nothing. Observe the large body of water swelling cold. She observes your eyes scanning the horizon. My brain! Then breaks the silence, slowly. Ravishal Special Administrative Region, Lake Kalo, with Insulindian Ocean Coalition Government, Insulindian Mission Command. Name after name, and none of them is familiar. They all seem real. They seem real, but nothing. But something is wrong. You feel like a kid looking at stickers on the fridge. Truvant, the Apricot Company, World Games 34. You can almost see your hand reaching out for them. Scratch at the corners and see if they peel loose. This feels like the most important of all thoughts. The one you must. The one you must truly complete. You cannot even look into it. This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Was there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. Huh? This has been informative. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Shut I'm up, sure Kim. I need the lowdown still. Everyone keeps dodging the lowdown. About even more fundamental aspects. I'm never going to get the lowdown. Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Ma'am, Monsieur will be here later too, and tomorrow. Isn't that true, ma'am? Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. But won't I be lazy if I don't do it all now? Oh, of course not. You are already diligent oh, for getting no. this far. And diligent boys remember where they left off. Never off. gonna get the lowdown. Indeed. I'm always at your service. What is think of something close to you? Six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs, junior officer Chad Tinbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the gut. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, you heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? It was Tequila Sunset? Yes, he lost his mind. Oh, that's me. Tinbrook answers. I'm Tequila fingers Sunset. Fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. What am I? You? You're an officer of the RCM. This abbreviation, what does it stand for? It stands for Revachol Citizens Militia. Good, good. And what is the Revachol Citizens Militia? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, detective. Yes, we are the Revachol Citizens Militia. Are we? We are. You said de facto. Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM I keep talking acts in gibberish, what is politically Jed. called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. What do you... That's it for the who I am part, then. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are to me is the police, the only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachol. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality? Well, I am here to help. Thanks, miss. That's all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. All Those right. That I know. Anything else? Tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. And you want us to investigate? Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. Am I gonna need bolt cutters for this? Unlikely officer. I'm talking about the lorries. Right, right. Once the ingredients reach Jamrock, that old lady to a network. Chat, there's no way country. she's not in They're on it. Our grasp. But in transit, they may be vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. All right. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. You'll be indebted to her, in a way, but one step ahead of the Union in another. Okay. I've made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. Yes? I abs- I- no. I'm very sad to hear that, officer. I'm not doing it. If you change your mind, please let me know. 
If not, good luck finding your badge. I'm sort of a communist builder. I'm sort of into communism, and that means I'm not with your whole business. At all. Anymore. In the meantime, I'll still try to assist you in any way I can. This disagreement is peanuts compared to what happens if you fail your main investigation. Yeah, I'll see you later, lady. Of course, detective. Our interview is done. Our day ends at 2200 hours. We have an hour to look for my badge. It's a good thing I vaguely remember where it is already. This would be a good chance to close your eyes if you don't want to have it spoiled. Even though you'd go to this place naturally if you explored the map. I vaguely remember I remember where it is. Because, yeah, I've beaten this game. I think I remember where my badge is. But I might be crazy. Let me go around here. Cut to the road. Memory cheater! And I think it's in this place. Technically. I'm not even sure. Maybe they've changed it because it's Final Cut. Really, things might have changed. I'm not even sure if I can get it right now. I need more money. Let's take a look around here. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Try to find something pretty and cool here. Then use it to win her back. Win her back? Yes. Buy something nice. A figurine. This sounds off. You shouldn't trust this guy. I'm gonna dig up a truly cool figurine. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say foul. What, what is this? Oh, that's the Headless Fawn Rider. Oh, of course, of course. There's been a lot of interest in that particular figurine. I had to hide it so it wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. I've heard about it. I've heard the Headless Fawn Rider ride the Headless Bull. Yes, there are several competing versions of the story. But I believe this figurine is a more canonical representation. Look at Kim, then back to Roy. Sorry, uh, what are we talking about again? The Headless Fawn Rider. It's an urban legend. About a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a fawn tracksuit. Tracksuit? As you see, he's missing his head. 50 cents. Bargain price. I'll take it! Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you. That was a very smooth salesman's grin. That almost comes off as earnest. You should learn from him. Hey, man. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. It's shameful how insufficient the police presence is in these parts. I haven't had any problems myself, though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Yeah, quite a collection indeed. It keeps indeed. me entertained. Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? By the way, do you um happen to have any guns like uh, the ones carried by cops? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. What? 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 Sold? What? The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. Wait, I sold you my gun? You... Uh... We've came here too. That just sounded really, really bad. 
You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol citizens' militia. Mm. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. I feel like there's something you're not telling me. You weren't quiet. Yourself, officer. What was I like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight. And that you need the money. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. You sucked on a gun? Good. Very normal. Wait. How... How much did I sell the gun for? Fifteen Rael. Oh my god. The lieutenant looks from you to Roy, and then back to you. It's clear that he hopes this tableau might still turn Fifteen out to be dollars. a bad dream. Assault my... It's not, though. My fucking state-issued firearm for fifteen bucks. This has got to be the most. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's pity there, too. In case you didn't notice. Happens to the best of us, I guess. It certainly does. Especially in Revachol. Was the buyer a policeman too? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit... Obsessive. But I was just happy to get rid of it. And of her. Truth be told... She was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizens' militia, and now a civilian mm. is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. There's only one explanation. She must be one of my rabid fans. Maybe she's a vigilante, wants to prove she can do our jobs better than we can. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I sold my gun. <sighs> Yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow, while also keeping our focus on the murder sorry, investigation. Sorry, cop. This mess. He means your mess. Any idea of where I can find this buyer? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from or where she went. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it right now. You just have to hope. Everett wasn't lying, and the Union can track her down in time. Have people from Everett Claire's Union come to track that gun? Maybe. Shady looking guys came in here yesterday. Looking like they'd just taken off their Wild Pines overalls. They asked if I have a police weapon to sell. I told them I already sold it. They went their way. It was a trip. But you know, all sorts of people come here. Asking for all sorts of things. Maybe Claire really is tracking down your gun. Hmm. At least I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something of else. Of course. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. No one likes to see what you have to see every day. All right, that's actually the all I got. The gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Is Roy high? If yes, what is he on? Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light while the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard, he's probably on Parolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. All right, right. For Holion, what is that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects, and it makes your eyes turn yellow. Sir, can you take off your sunglasses? I'd like to check your eyes. Why on earth? These are prescription. I can't really see without them. There's a note of indignation mm -hmm, in his voice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Those triangle patches on his vest. You have a feeling they mean something. 
like they're similar to the halogen rectangle on your jacket. What's with the triangles on your vest, sir? I was. I was with the Emergency Relief Brigade. You know, after the People's Pile disaster. <laughs> Had to take Perolodon for radiation sickness. That's what you were hinting at just now, wasn't it? Oh. He's taken for mental and emotional, not physical pain these days. It must have been tough, radioactive cleanup. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened, and why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment, and early death, cancer mostly. And we knew all that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Whose fault was it that the generator failed? No one's. Every so much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? The people's pile, what's that? A bad idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste everywhere. Probably some of it in you, too. Thank you for telling me. I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. Yeah. I have other business to take care of. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. What? What are copo types? Yes. Guess what's yours? Some kind of... Sorry cop? I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Yes, sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? <sighs> Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. Um... Won't the other Copo types be jealous? What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual Copo type from sorry to anything. Ah, <sighs> I'm sorry. Of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info or Maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. You're one sorry piece of shit. A cop penitent. A flagellant cop monk. This is not the right line of work for you. You should be groveling at the feet of a feudal lord, providing lurid evidence against yourself at a Mazovian show trial, ripping the flesh from your back with a cat of nine tails. Whatever made you this way, you can be damn sure it was your own fault. Do it. Really criticize yourself. Who knows? You might uncover something of importance from your guilt-ridden past. Sometimes it do be like that. I'm sorry. Are you sorry? No, don't tell him I'm really not, chat. I'm not really sorry. I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm not even a real hobo cop. That's right, chat. I'm not even a real hobo cop. I'm gonna take a fucking shower in my hotel room. And I'm gonna buy my hotel room. That's right. That's right. Can I help you? By the way, I'm gonna sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. You wait and see, cafeteria manager. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. So about that money I owe you. Yes, have you got it? Yeah, I have your money. How much do I owe you again? A lot. For the room and broken window? A hundred real. Oh, I have your money. Well, here it is, uh, 
Sorry for the trouble. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. I'll unlock the electronic lock to your room. All the doors lock automatically at 9 p.m. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. All right. I'll take a room here too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? I've seen something at the Whirling Guard. A thing I need to talk about. Thing. I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the Union. Yes, not the whole damn Union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. I'm but big they're shit! They're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. He hates the Union, but grudgingly recognizes its power over him. So he's directing his frustration at you instead. Retaliate. It's a shame you gotta suck up to the Union to stay afloat. I don't. I'm simply providing a service, or really facilitating the offering of services to paying customers, and it doesn't matter. I don't have to explain myself to you. We should find out who this Lord faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. Right, right. How do we, we find them? We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry. True, even true, true. Strike. You glance at the clock on the wall behind the manager. Huh. It's after 1600. The sign said reserved starting at 1600. Why isn't anyone in the mess hall? Good question. They're probably getting drunk or protesting something somewhere or laying low after the, you know, lynching. Whatever he may feel about you, he can't miss the opportunity to throw you a look of what he assumes is sheer understanding. Go with it. Yes, I think I see. Yeah, yeah. The Union guys think they're untouchable. They probably yeah, keep talking. kill that guy or keep something. Keep talking. Now yeah. they can hide out till it all blows over and it's fair yeah. weather again. Give me, your, give me all their info, too. You got any addresses, man? I know I've emotionally detonated your whole deal with the Sylvie thing, and now I'm just gonna fucking squeeze you like a sponge. Hmm. I have a feeling we'll make their acquaintance sooner or later. There's something else I want to talk about. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. All right, goodbye, Gart. It's time. It's time to become the big communist builder. In like an eon. It's a long ex. That's a long research cycle. We're building communism again. It's finally coming back. First, I'm gonna take that shower. I, I'm owed that. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Oh, I don't want to good. I don't want to say good night. Just a moment. You had oh. some questions earlier, I believe. And besides, we should discuss our progress on the investigation. I just want to make sure we have this go talk. Let's to the balcony. All right, let's go. We are out of time. The air on this outside day. is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then. Hang on, I gotta. Game, you gotta let the map load. Where shall we begin? We should talk about the investigation first and foremost. But I also remember you wanting to discuss the RCM. I didn't know you smoked, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. How did you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. 
it would be easier to simply quit. Right, then, the debrief. Yes. It's been a long and eventful day. How do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. Our inspection could have been more thorough, as it always can, but we have some leads we can follow on. In addition, we got that body down from the tree, and we performed the field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. That music's a tiny bit loud. I don't know why it's mixed that way. I think it's because it's just not balanced for the new voice acting. Moreover, but it is good we music. found that the hanged man wasn't just hanged. He was also shot. That was some excellent detective work. And you managed to locate and pull out the bullet, so we can get ballistics, make of the gun. All this is invaluable. Yeah, I'm a professional. The rest is up to the boys in processing. Maybe they will surprise us by doing their job for once, but I wouldn't count on it. There's still work to be done at the crime scene, however. We mustn't forget that. Now, for the interviews. That's my forte. Unlike most cops, I understand how important communication is in our line of work. I love doing interviews, and people love me. They love bathing in my glory. I'm sure. Well, we conducted an interview with Everard Blair. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information, however. I'm sure I can get him to talk. I'm a little intimidated by him, honestly. He has stuff on me. Well, we will have to work through that. Claire also helped you... How should I say? Remember your name? I it's want a different name. name. One I haven't ruined yet. You can look into the process of changing your name after we finish this investigation. Kim must have had doubts about his name at some point too, but deliberately discarded them. Have you ever wanted to change your name, Kim? Change? No, not exactly. But I think all of us at some point imagined what our lives might have been had we been something else. And then we feel trapped by the names we've been given as symbols of the intentions and expectations of others. Even if I were to change my name now, upon hearing any syllable that sounds like Kim in the street, I turn to see who was calling me. But let's talk about Joyce Messier for a moment. Hmm, we talked to her, but we... Now that's a cool lady with a cool name. I have a feeling that she knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Precinct 41 practice? I'm holding shift. I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until we get up tomorrow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's part of the Jamrock Shuffle. It's impressive, especially for a man your age. And in those hills. Nice shoes, by the way. Thanks. I like the green. Goes with the orange. Thanks. So, what are our powers exactly? The RCM? They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses, in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Uh, a thousand? Why not more? The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Revachol. Wouldn't it be easy to abuse... Wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Right, right. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It oh. undermines trust in the RCM. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold sleep. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Wait, how can we be sure the arrestee will show up? You can't. Those oh. who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. Okay. When power calls you, you come. But power itself is a fragile trick of perception. I see, and if someone resists... We are permitted to use whatever force we deem necessary, even lethal. Hmm. Have you killed anyone, Kim? Yes. The last time was four years ago. He says it matter-of-factly and moves on. Well, have I killed anyone? That's an improbability. 
perhaps even impossibility. Of course you've killed people. It's somewhere down there, melting in all the drink. I probably have. Precinct 41 is known for a higher than average rate of police violence. He's not judging you. He's respectfully acknowledging the difficulty of working in your precinct. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. He taps on his coat pocket where he keeps his notes. Wait, so if I kill someone while on duty... You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government and the moral intern more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. <laughs> Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government founded the RCM. Say nothing. Silence. A great comment to such a conundrum. Just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. Kuno. It's different in land, in Jamrock, in the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the union, to the company. Not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks. The jurisdictions of our two precincts. And in Jamrock and the GRIH? We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Night. Captain Ptolemy Price steps into the yard. A piebald horse waits by the motor carriage, chewing oats out of an oat bag. Seagulls fly overhead. The sky is black. Captain Price wears a black suit and a standard patrol coat. As he mounts the horse to head home, rows of houses on either side, hunching over the sidewalks, and Precinct 41, with its dome roof growing distant. Around him, the streets are silent. A kid on the corner waves at the captain as he takes the turn on Petition and Main. The horse neighs. The captain nods back. Thanks, kid, he thinks. He's grateful. I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here, at least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. Thanks for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. He puts out his stub of his cigarette and looks to the door. Time to end the day, Chet. We did good work. We've become communists. But it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> Bye, Kim. See you in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to sleep in my disgusting room. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Shower! Never! Crawl in. Time to sleep, baby. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. But and you... then sleep doesn't come. Huh? And then sleep doesn't come. But I want to sleep. Obviously, 
You're in bed with your eyes closed, but it's not happening. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. Check the blanket. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colors. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. Roll over to the other side. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed him? Who? Something to do with... What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. No more thoughts. Fall asleep now. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images, images start forming. Uh, we need the cock carousel. I can't sleep without it. I need that thing. And in the light, the carousel spins, the cock carousel. Is this what it says on the can Harry answer the question I was born in a hospital where people usually go to die you're not kidding anyone Harry you don't remember shit tell me do you remember your wife's hand on your face you said who do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth I left. Oh no, funky baby, you stayed. It was the rest of it that left. While you just stood there, with one hand on the bottle, and the other on your dick, watching it go. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? Uh, I can get it all back. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. What is Elysium? Everything. The pale and the isolas on the surface. The outer magnetosphere burning furious truth 8,000 years of written history you really dropped the ball Harry 4.6 billion people and you failed every single one of them you really fucked up uh, I can come back from this you're not coming back from shit thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours bumping into things and acting like a clown who are you kidding i'm trying to solve tr trying to solve this case you're trying to what i can't hear you this is just a word dream now jumbled up garbage the pictures are gone the bed rises to meet you a thin sleep-like state more glass than velvet, grinding in your head. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. Oh God, there's another type? Oh yes, party boy. No! And it's worse than the one before. No! Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. A silent alarm. Hangover too. Head, like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Maximum Time Omega hangover. Close on, Harry. 
time to go to work in the shit factory. And that is where we're going to end this one off. Uh, we are, this is a one off. This was always going to be a one off. I'm going to post the save of this on the Discord. So if you want to continue to watch this or continue to follow from the story I was doing with this character, you can. If not, this game is a masterpiece. I personally feel like after the first day, this is a game that is best enjoyed by yourself. Uh, it is, it has some of the best writing and the voice acting from this has only improved it. Past what was already like a 9.5 out of 10 game for me. So, yeah. Uh, we, I won't be personally doing another thing out of simply the principle of knowing what this game gets to and not really wanting to stream that. Honestly, this game gets real heavy. As just an overall disclaimer, if this wasn't uh, already fairly obvious from the last, like, that last scene there, this game gets extremely fucking heavy, like, with the story it tells. It gets much heavier than this. Like, extremely fucking heavy. But it also does an awesome job. Gets a little also heavy-handed politically, which either you love it or you hate it, I can look past it. It's not much of a, a no. It's more like it just it's a lot. If you're not into political crap, it, it will beat you on the back of the head with a billion different things. But you can opt out of all of it. And it makes it very clear like, hey, you don't have to go do this if you don't want to. Like you have a choice. Is it specifically one way? I'd say it covers everything pretty well. But obviously any writer is going to be semi biased towards a certain ideology because that's ideology. Everyone has one. Everyone has no, no one's a true centrist, all right? <laughs> There's no such thing. But you can technically, I, I, I think you can become a radical centrist in the game, but like, obviously, you're going to see biases in writing like this towards every direction. That's just fundamentally, you know, that's, that's what happens when you're a writer. You're a human that's writing a game. Like, you know? Either way, uh, if you come at this game with an open mind, you can have a lot of fucking fun with it. And I am not streaming the other days, not because they are bad, because I would say the game as a package is, is like the last half of it is incredible. It's just like, it's not, the energy from the first day is a lot more streamable than the other days, at least as far as streaming is concerned. It becomes a, yeah, it's a very personal game. And I think that at a certain point, it's a disservice to it to stream the later days because I think those are much better interpreted and enjoyed yourself. So, thanks for watching. I've been putting off streaming this for a while. I knew it was going to be a one-off. That was always what it was going to be. Sorry that the hardcore stuff wasn't really something that ever really came in, but the chat integration was a little bit... You know, it was nice to have for buffs to get the, you know, fun rolls for stream, but... uh. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me, chat. This was this was nice to be able to do this. So thanks. King Thief uh 369, thanks for the five dollars. I mean sorry, five gifted subs. Thank you very much, King Thief, for that. Five gifted subs. Uh Happy Martin with ten gifted subs and Lunchbox with a gifted sub as well. Uh with how long this stream has gone, I'm sure a billion things have been deleted. So if I missed your donation or subscription or gifted sub or bits, I am sorry. Uh as you could probably tell, when it comes to something like this, I get a little bit distracted by the story. I didn't really want to go off on huge chat tangents because I wanted to just display this game as what it is without too many detours. Because I feel like it it's a game that deserves that. So, yeah. One of my favorite games, one of, probably up there with Divinity 2 as my favorite RPG of all time, uh, for very obviously very different reasons. This game is extremely unique. Uh, the writing is incredible, and with the voice acting, it's gotten even better. I'll probably end up playing through this on my own uh, off stream to see what the new content is, because I've added new stuff that I will that I have not seen. So yeah, I am out of here. I will be doing a stream tomorrow at three. I know I've been doing a lot of streaming. 
Uh, Binding of Isaac's update. Its expansion has come out. I will probably be streaming tomorrow at 3 p.m. ish EST. I want to do the Binding of Isaac patch. Uh, so that'll be a fun little roguelike day. It's been a while since I played that fucking game. I, I, I got the hunger. So that'll be tomorrow at 3, and I'm going to take a couple of days off. Probably, uh, probably like one or two days off. I'll be back on like Friday after. And Goblins. Yeah, and Goblins after. So. Did you see Risk of Rain 2's final stage ramp? Nah, but I'm sure I'll get around to it eventually. But uh, yeah, Binding of Isaac at uh, 3 p.m. ish EST tomorrow, a little bit earlier than usual. And I will see you then. Thanks for watching, chat. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to go eat my food that I ordered two or three hours ago. <laughs> this was a long stream. Two long streams in a row. See you later, chat. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining me. This was, this was a treat. You guys behaved. Mainly because I emote only moded you when I knew I had to, but even when I, you weren't emote only moded, you guys behaved. Wow, look at that. See you tomorrow. Probably. If I'm not there tomorrow, I'll be back on Thursday. But I'm probably streaming tomorrow. I'll update the chat and the title. You know how this works. See you then. 3 p.m.